MSCXCR and uh, uh, I did not think this through before agreeing to it. Let's plug and play. Just as video game consoles are nothing new, neither are bootleg knockoffs of video game consoles. Just ask Ashens, his channel's filled with videos on them. But this one in particular raises several questions, not the least of which being, why is Dad so much more excited than everybody else? And who or what is Lexabook? Short answer? They're French. <laughs> Stinky pits and all, baby! And since I don't have much insight on these guys, I asked the European branch of River City Gamers to help out with researching Lexabook, and here's Ama Yurahakago to present the results. Lexi, what now? Just because I happen to be European, that doesn't mean I'm magically going to know about every single little video game company you might want to ask me about. Although I am a self-professed expert in knowing obscure shit that nobody else remembers. But it probably would have been a bit easier if you just checked Moby Games about this stuff. Oh, except even they don't seem to have an entry on these guys. Based on what little I could find, Lexabook is based out of France and primarily makes electronics for kids, many of which are educational. They and their stock photos of families pretending to be happy have been around since 1992, and since then they've made a few different handhelds and TV consoles. So if this is a Lexabook console, why does it say Yeno Games on the side? And who the hell is Yeno Games? Yeno was a game and console distributor in the 80s and 90s, bringing technology like the Daiwo DPC-200, the Mitsubishi FL-M120, and the VTEC Socrates to various regions of Europe, like Germany, Belgium, and France. And here's a shocker! What? They're French! Lexabook acquired them back in 1998, and supposedly they phased out the Yeno name and replaced it with their own. But for some reason, it slapped onto the side of this console. Probably for that name recognition value. From a region that Yeno never distributed in. Okay, look at it this way. There are 200 games on this console, and I paid $25 for it, so that's about... Um, 12.5 cents per game. I think it's only fair that we lower the standards for these games just a little bit when we start playing them. Let's just hope that they function. <laughs> The moment you open the box, the first thing you'll see is that everything comes in a big plastic sheet with recesses for all the parts. I feel like I'm unboxing a public school lunch tray. The controllers, obviously, are modeled after the Wii, but instead of two AA batteries, they each need three AAA batteries, and the battery cover has to be screwed on and off. But since there's no sensor bar, they can't be used to point at the TV, and they can only sort of detect motion. The wrist straps are built into the controller, and each is specifically assigned for player 1 and 2. While the controllers don't feel like they're going to fall apart, they do look and feel cheap. All of the buttons snap in and out when pressed, and most make an audible popping noise in the process. Also, the end of the controller is translucent, and if you look carefully, you can see the wiring and part of the circuit board jutting out. As cheap as the controllers feel, the console itself actually is. It pretends to have a disk drive, but that's just more translucent black plastic, which, again, you can see the innards of the console through it. That's not the most surprising thing about this, though. Check this out. The thing is light as a feather. In fact, it's actually just a plastic shell, which has the absolute bare minimum of hardware packed inside of it. Here's a list of things this console is lighter than. The Wii. A Neo Geo controller. A couple of GameCube games. A t-shirt and a CD. My cell phone and a half-empty can of soda. There's also a slot in the back for a micro SD card a 4 gigabyte micro SD card to be precise. If you remove it, the console won't start up, but it will lead you to one of the best music tracks on the console, which they didn't even bother trying to loop.
4 gigabyte micro SD card has to be plugged in or the console won't work. How many of the 200 games are on this card? How many games are on the micro SD card? 12 games? 57 games? 134 games? Or all 200 games? Lock in your votes while I abandon all hope I have for this console because every game is on the micro SD card. I know because I put it in an SD adapter, plugged it into my PC, and saw the files and folders for every single game as well as the operating system and site applications. Most of the games going by their last modified date were made in the mid to late 2000s and, amazingly, several of the games in the fun section have different names or aren't even spelled right. Many of the games even have raw.avi video files or mp3 sound and music files which anyone can simply play or copy paste off of the board. Like this one. Most of the sound files are terrible music, or a Chinese guy trying to read English voiceovers. Wonderful! The throw is very perfect! Oh, you have failed! Don't lose the chance! You should pay attention to the rules! Misplay! Please adjust the throw gesture! Hit the remaining ball! Good! Go on! Oh, great! You are the first! What a pity! You've broken the rule! You might say, how do you know that the guy voicing this is Chinese? Well, I don't. But I think it's a pretty safe educated guess, considering that several of the program and audio files on the card are written in Chinese. Also, some of them sound like this. Getting back to the system setup, guess where you're supposed to put the console? According to the manual, you should put it in front of the TV. And I don't mean off to the side or on a shelf right underneath it, I mean in front of the TV. Obstructed view. The menu has a mouse pointer, which is just there for decoration, and a voiceover for every single menu option. Music, art, picture album, more. And on top of games, it comes with extra applications, such as a calculator. For some reason. What's that, sweetie? You don't know what 12 times 8 is? Well, let's fire up the Lexabook, watch him a fuck it, and find out! There are also instructions on how to use the system and its controllers. It also says there's a website you can visit to download more games and applications to the SD card, but it conveniently doesn't list a web address. Also, why is there a big X in the top right when I can't click on it to close this window? And what the hell is a star dict? Uh, you, you know what? I don't want to know. The classroom section is more of a killing time section. The art section consists of coloring, aka a coloring book, which includes the Earth looking really worried that the star is about to crash into it, and painting, which is a really old version of MS Paint. I'm not kidding. Look, it's MS Paint. Same tools, and it's even got the blue bar and red X at the top of the window. Then there's the music section, which is like if Mario Paint's music composer had a one-track mind. Literally, there's only one music track and you can only use one instrument sound. Sometimes it's tough just to get notes laid down on the track, and even though there were only 10 instrument sounds, I couldn't make out what some of them were because of how garbled the font looks. Whatever, let's just see how the electric guitar sounds. Not bad, but I think the trumpet's got the cleanest sound. The picture album is a joke, as it's just screenshots of some of the sports games. The video teaching folder is also a joke, as the only video in it is the intro to the ping pong game, which is so choppy and poorly animated the only thing you can learn from it is when you pay $25 for an off-brand plug-and-play console, you get what you pay for. The games are divided into two main categories, sports and fun. Because as we all know, sports fun. games aren't fun. That's sarcasm. Don't get your panties in a bunch. There are 39 sports games and 161 fun games. And if you think I'm not going over every single one of them just so you can feel a fraction of the suffering I did, you must not have noticed yet that this is a multi-part video series. Let's start with sports, specifically tennis. 
There were three characters to choose from with different stats for each, but I didn't notice much of any difference between them. Sometimes the game detects your swing, sometimes it doesn't. However, if you violently shake the controller from side to side when the ball gets within 10 feet of you, you'll hit it. And that's the extent of this game's depth. It's like a prototype for Wii Sports Tennis, except you can just casually serve the ball at about 170 miles per hour. To put that into context, the fastest tennis serve ever recorded was 163 miles per hour. Movement is automatic, there are no shot types or strengths, and if there's a way to aim shots, I couldn't figure it out. It's tough to win a single point in this because the opposing AI is so difficult. No matter which character they are, they almost always chase down every single shot no matter how far away it is. I had one point which lasted three minutes before I finally won. Three minutes! The only saving grace here is the game over animation if you play as the girl. <laughs> Super Slider is a skiing game which, like tennis, lets you choose a character using a painfully slow selection screen. Unlike tennis, Super Slider doesn't pretend there's any difference between any of the characters. Not even this abomination masquerading as a rabbit. You have to navigate a slightly winding course, going between gates and reaching the finish before time runs out. Both controllers have to be used for this game, and thrusting both behind you is supposed to give you a boost of speed. What usually happens is either one of them registers, causing you to steer to the side and possibly running into a gate or the boundaries, or neither of them register and you'll lose speed. Aside from the controls, this isn't a difficult game as, despite moving over 200 kilometers per hour, or for you non-metric viewers out there, over 125 miles per hour, everything still moves at a snail's pace. F-Zero GX, this is not. You can add a second or two to the timer by passing through gates or doing stunts by swinging around both controllers like a goddamn idiot in midair. Also, the music cuts out a lot because they didn't bother looping it properly. <laughs> Golf somehow manages to undo much of the progress video games have made over the past 25 years. This game lags constantly, to the point where it not only fails to read swing strength, but often doesn't realize you're swinging at all and kicks you out of the stroke screen. If they were going for the happy Gilmore putting experience, then hey, they nailed it. The red bar for recommended swing strength often doesn't account for what surface you're on, so you can end up badly over or undershooting greens and fairways. I consider it nothing more than dumb luck that I got a birdie on a couple of holes. How is it that this golf game is significantly worse than Fuji Golf? A casual Microsoft game made on next to no budget that came out in 1991. Snowball, which I didn't realize this was a sport, starts a trend of games which only use one controller but don't have multiplayer. Actually, most of the games on this console don't have multiplayer and that includes a fair number of the quote-unquote sports games. Five of the nine games on the main screen don't have multiplayer, which if the box art is anything to go by, I thought that was supposed to be a selling point for this system. After another painfully slow character selection screen, it's time for the painfully slow slog of a game. You flick the controller forward to throw snowballs and knock out the opposing kids until you get to one with two health bars, beat him or her, and then you win that round, of which there are six and they average about 8 minutes each. You can move side to side very slowly and duck behind cover, either to avoid getting hit, even though it absolutely looks like you're getting hit most of the time, or curl into the fetal position at having to hear this annoying music loop which is the same for every round and never ever changes. <laughs> There's a snowball power-up, which I'm still not sure what it does. Maybe it makes snowball throwing faster, but I never noticed a difference. Aiming is harder than it should be because your shots are always to the right of where you're centered. Shots also have a weird perspective on them as you move closer to the side of the screen, which makes them veer toward the center. Sometimes when I try to move sideways, instead I'd end up throwing a snowball, despite my controller not moving at all. Off the top of my head, I can think of only two positives to Snowball. One, the whole point of this game is to make children cry. <laughs> <laughs>
and two, the sound effects, most of which aren't original. <laughs> <sighs> Boxing opens with a dramatic PowerPoint slideshow, and the revelation that the game is actually called Championship Boxing. You select one of four nameless characters, unless you call them by what their trunks say, and get something many games in this section don't have. Instructions on how to play. I really appreciate that the game taught me how to den fence in particular. For some reason, I couldn't control where my punches with the right controller were going, so most of the time I wound up punching with my left hand and defending, uh, excuse me, den-fending with my right. That is, when the input lag wasn't screwing me over. Den-fence is weird because when you block a punch, your guard drops automatically, so you have to keep letting go and holding start again. You can build up a meter to get... power punches? I have no idea what's happening. It's even more confusing when the opponent does it. The first time I saw this, I thought it was a glitch. Anyway, knock the other guy down until his health bars are completely drained to win, at which point the music starts layering over itself, and you get booted back to the character select screen. Yep, the game's only one stage long. Would you expect anything less? Or more, I guess I should say? Beach Volleyball has no multiplayer despite only using one controller. The opening demo outright lies about the controls, as you're supposed to hold up, not down, to serve, and implies you can move your character, which you can't. After selecting one of the four palette swap teams, you're dumped into a tournament and realize that not only does the music not fit at all, But even though there's only one motion control, flicking the controller up to bump, set, spike, and dig, it's either not very responsive or requires abnormally precise timing. The game never explains how to direct spikes to one side of the court or the other, and it never explains how to perform the power shots the CPU uses to score on you every time. Now for baseball. Again, only one controller is used, but no two-player. The only game mode is bottom of the ninth which starts you off at the top of the first. You pick a team and play out a game of baseball, which won't make it anywhere near the full nine innings. Hitting and running requires swinging the controller ridiculously hard, and you have to swing the controller up, not to the side. For running, you have to shake the controller ridiculously fast, otherwise your player turns into a mime. Is it just me, or does the base runner look gigantic compared to everything else? Also, you only ever run to first base. No doubles, no triples, everything is either a single or a home run. Speaking of, if you have runners on base, they won't appear on screen. Maybe they ducked out early because the announcer was pissing them off. It's just unbelievable! It's just unbelievable! It's just unbelievable! It's just unbelievable! At least they nailed the ballpark atmosphere, what with the giant soda bottle saying baseball game, and the banners saying baseball game, the vigor refuel, and China refuels. I don't want to say pitching is impossible, but it is. There's no way to aim pitches, so everything goes right down the middle of the plate. There aren't curveballs or sliders or breaking balls, every pitch is a fastball. And to throw a decent pitch, you need to swing the controller so hard you'll end up on the shortlist for Tommy John surgery. Not that it matters, because the batter can hit absolutely everything you throw at him. The only strikes I threw were when he decided not to swing. And when he did, it was almost always a home run! And it's home run! And when it's not a home run, you can't control any field players. Most of the time you'll just get a video of them moving toward the ball, then starting to run past the ball before it abruptly cuts off. You might still win because batting and base running are incredibly glitchy. Sometimes holding the controller perfectly still registers it as being in constant motion. So you'll end up spamming full power swings and sprinting to first base. You can let this happen until the score runs up to 15 to nothing and win by mercy rule. Oh 
for fuck's sake. Eight games in and we're already reusing the calculator music. Again, there were different characters with different stats, and again, I didn't notice any difference between them. You can curve the ball with each throw, but it always seems to direct the ball away from most of the pins, as you're ultimately still throwing the ball in a straight line. Hit the remaining ball. Good. Go on. Oh, wait, those voice clips were for the bowling game? That line doesn't even make sense for bowling. The problem with bowling, aside from the annoying characters and environments, is it's way too easy to run out the score. There's a spot on the lane where if you throw the ball at half strength or higher, you'll get a strike every single time. You put your feet up and you relax because you are going to witness the perfect game. You see? The perfect game. What else would you expect from Mr. Perfect? Basketball, or rather Soup Oot, starts off with the best music track on the console. And yes, I'm aware of how low my standards are for this console's music. The instructions just tell you what the modes of play are instead of how to play. But that's okay because all you need to know is that you shoot baskets by holding the controller like a dart and throwing it at the TV. Even those crappy Wii Party games at least ask you to do the basketball shooting motion. There were three rounds, one where the basket is stationary, one where it moves slightly, and one where it moves faster. In the latter two, if you swish a shot, it counts as a three-pointers. Shot strength seems downright random at points, not just in reading how hard you move the controller, but in how the ball reacts after it's shot. You can have two shots at the same strength, one of which goes in, while the other isn't even close. This despite only being able to shoot directly in front of you, which makes the rounds where the basket moves really boring. So boring, I feel I have to spice this part of the video up a bit by showing you Gerald Green's cupcake dunk. Now Green gets the bounce, throws it down, and puts out the candle in the process. He blew it out! He blew it out! He blew it out, Chuck! Blah, Chuck, he blew the candle blew out! The candle out. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Now it's time to get into the more section where they don't even try to dress up the games, as everything is just listed in alphabetical order with folder symbols next to everything. Do I need to start another counter for how often the calculator music gets used? Shake the controller violently to run. There, that's it. You can experience everything this game has to offer, including the title screen and victory animation, in under a minute. Hope you enjoyed the chance to play up and engage in some civic exercise. <laughs> Fucking hell. It's the same thing as 100 meter, but you have to press up to jump as you're spazzing out with the controller. Even when you inevitably hit a gate, you can not only still win, but still get first overall. Archery? Is actually okay-ish. Yes, it's another one-stage, incredibly short game with graphics out of a college art project, but it actually functions almost entirely as intended. Except you don't have to hold the controllers like the instructions show, that's a load of shit. The most annoying thing, other than the voice clips when you choose a character... Yeah! Yahoo! ...is how the bow sways around when you pull back an arrow. It's like how in first-person shooters, if you aim down the sights, the gun will sway back and forth a bit, but much stiffer. I know I'm setting the standards low by saying this, but this is the best game on the console so far. Here's something you probably don't know about me. I love badminton. 
Whenever the Olympics come around, I find out when it is and what channel it's on, and call off work to watch it. At the highest level, a badminton match looks like Super Saiyans playing tennis. It's ridiculous. And as you might expect, this version of badminton is almost nothing like that. Like tennis, if there's a way to aim shots, I couldn't figure it out. Unlike tennis, the AI is rock stupid. Most of the points I won were from the opponent standing still and letting the birdie hit them in the face. Even so, I was still struggling to do well, because swings don't register consistently and hit detection for the birdie seems random. The only consistent way I found to hit it was to basically let it hit me in the chest before swinging, which is absolutely not how badminton works. Smashes and lobs seem to occur randomly, and it's a minor miracle if you can get a leaping smash to happen. God damn it! Somehow, I still managed to win a match. Jerry. And the game froze. Welcome to Canoe Slalom, home of the Thousand Yard Stare. I kid you not, I have seen some shit. What? Again? No, wrong, no, right away, this is wrong. This is a kayak, not a canoe. You can tell by the paddle. Mixing up kayaks and canoes? Oh, you better believe that's a pattern. <sighs> you use both controllers to paddle down a river and go through gates while avoiding rocks. It's like the skiing game, but harder to control. Instead of holding the paddle in the water to steer, you have to keep paddling on one side until it decides to work. And if the first 8 seconds or so of each heat is any indication, it's in a near constant state of slowdown, which makes the controls even less responsive. Everything's just in a straight line until the finish, unlike, say, Olympic whitewater slalom where you have rapids and different directional currents and gates you have to go in reverse through. Also unlike Olympic whitewater slalom, this isn't fun. Curling... works for the most part. You can throw stones, sweep them down the ice, even sweep one side to alter the trajectory, the power meter is consistent, though it lies when it says you can hold up to start it. It functions, but it does have noticeable problems. The AI isn't very smart, as it regularly helped me rack up points in each set. When I- wait, are those the three crowns of Sweden? I'm playing as Sweden? Then what the hell happened to their flag? You can't sweep your opponent's stones if they're hit, and the biggest flaw of the game, no yelling. That's the one thing that makes curling fun is watching adults scream at rocks. Keep it moving, keep it going! Wait, it's close! Hard! Fight it! Fight it! Fight it! Wait, close! Yep. Clean your ass! Yes! Burn. Make sure, make sure, make sure, Burn. make sure! Yes! 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 Hard! Yes! The game's otherwise functional, but it's also more than twice as slow as curling in real time. It takes a slow, methodical sport and makes it painfully slow. Again? Darts can't decide if it wants to be really boring or really annoying. Boring because it's darts, and because look at these guys. That is the face of pure, unbridled apathy. Annoying, because every time you hit a bullseye, or a double, or a triple, this happens. Great! 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 Uh -oh. You're using Windows and Mac sounds in the same game? It pretends you're getting nervous and moves the aiming reticule around, but that goes away the moment you move it. And throw strength is almost always at a point where you'll nail your target every time. The only challenge here is staying awake. Oh, come on! I thought we were past this! You shake the controller like an idiot, then hold up to select the angle of the throw. The only other difference to the track and field games we've seen so far is that the crowd is frozen in time when you're on the podium. Guess what every menu sound in fencing is. Fencing, in essence, is a simplified fighting game. One attack, two types of defense, and movement. 
There's also a super meter, which essentially makes you unhittable while lunging in for attacks. This would be passable as long as I couldn't just spam attacks the whole time to win. Of course. If you try to play the game seriously, it boils down to a glorified guessing game due to how slow the inputs register and the length of almost every move's recovery time. And speaking of time, who the hell needs 9 minutes per round for this? And why does it show 3 slots for round wins when each match is best of 3? I'm never going to escape this, am I? You have to whip the controller really hard to cast, but for reeling in fish, it takes barely any effort. This is emphasized by level 4, when the game abruptly throws in the chance of breaking your fishing line. It also tosses in the chance of fishing out crap like shoes in level 2. Well done! Why do they still play the well done voice in the calculator music even when you fish out garbage? Speaking of garbage, what in the 8th circle of hell is this? Did the programmer's child draw this? Or at least color it in using the bootleg MS Paint from earlier? And why is one of these named after the formation of the universe? Eh, not like it matters. Even the fish that do exist don't look like their real-world counterparts. On to football, where they can't even get the menus right. With one exception, nothing is highlighted. It just assumes you know that the start button gets you into a game, and the select button takes you back. As for the game, why is there a cat boy? As for the game, it's the soccer game from Wii Fit. It's a near exact copy. You head the balls as they come to you, avoid getting cleats or panda heads to the face, yep, even the obstacles are exactly the same. It even shows how many calories you burned. Or something. I I'm just guessing that's what caloric means, because otherwise I have no idea. There were three levels. And the only difference between them is how many balls you'll see, which... No. Nope. Nope, I'm done. I... You know what? I need a break. I need to play real games. We'll cover the rest later. I've got to play something else. Later, guys. Because I don't know when to quit, let's plug and play more of this. Happy concert- oh god, we're off to a bad start already. Is that a 12-year-old Titus? <laughs> Getting started early, huh? You're playing a rhythm game to lead a marching band, so I don't know why this game is called Happy Concert. The band grows as you hit notes by flicking either controller when the notes line up. This should be really easy considering that all two songs in this game play at a snail's pace. Stars and Stripes Forever is not supposed to be this slow. You'll probably struggle anyway because, as the song goes on, the notes you have to hit desync from the song. If the visuals get too complex, things will start to flash at random. And if the game asks you to flick both controllers at once, it will either detect one or neither of them. What can I even say at this point? Thus far, High Jump is the most annoying of the track and field games. If for no other reason, then I can't figure out how it works. Speed doesn't seem to affect jump height, the angle somehow doesn't have a significant impact on jump height, and I'm not entirely convinced the measurement isn't for horizontal jump distance instead of jump height. More importantly, in the high jump event you're supposed to set the bar to a certain height and then get three attempts to clear it, not have the bar a meter or two high and then jump as high as possible over it. This game gets damn near everything wrong. Going by this title screen, horse racing speed must think it's the initial D of horse racing. If that means the horses can drift and the soundtrack is all Eurobeat, this could be fun.
They can't, it's not, and it isn't. The only nice thing I can say about this is that someone bothered to look up some horse racing terminology to describe the horses. Other than that, it's a mess. The stats for each horse don't seem to matter, and the speed you're moving at usually doesn't fit well with the choppy animations and backgrounds, which only look smooth when running at top speed. Horses often don't respond to whips, and even when you're trying to be conservative with stamina, it constantly runs out well before the race ends. I only managed to win one race, and my reward for it was having my horse and jockey dipped in chrome. I guess this is how they save money instead of having to make new trophies each race. It never ends. There's really nothing to say here. It's like the discus game, but easier. My first throw smashed the record, and I didn't even throw it that good of an angle. Oh god, it's like someone made the CGI versions of random chibi drawings from DeviantArt. Each jogger has their own stats. Again, I didn't notice much of a difference between them. But if they do matter, they're horribly unbalanced. Dad's only weakness is skills. But what the hell does that mean when we're talking about jogging? Maybe it has to do with how everyone in this game jogs like they're playing Mario Brothers and constantly mashing the jump button. You shake the controller to jog, but not too fast or your character face plants. The only excitement here is that sometimes the road gently turns to one side or the other, and other characters who you never saw at the starting line will teleport ahead of you. Other than that, the game is painfully slow, which only gets worse when you up the distance of each jog. It pretends it's keeping track of how many calories you've burned, but it doesn't keep track of where anyone is or what place you're in, so you can't really win a race. Wonderful. Stamp forward. Wait, what? Little Hunter is... somehow considered a sports game. Well, I guess there is technically javelin throwing. I knew I was going to have a good time when I tried to go to the help menu, and instead it sent me to the character select screen. The game recycles the throw sounds from the snowball fight game, and a lot of generic growls and roars I've heard in countless games and movies before. <laughs> You have to score X amount of points within an insanely generous time limit by throwing spears at various cobbled together 3D models of beasts, like warthogs or kinda sorta not quite griffins. Different beasts give different points, and the difficulty of the throw doesn't matter. Speaking of, you set the power from 1 to 10 with the arrows to adjust throw distance, aim with the arrows, then shake the controller to throw. Why that also couldn't be assigned to a button, I don't know. And why the power meter goes from 1 to 10 when the only numbers that affect throw distance are 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, I don't know. And why tapping the arrows to adjust the power sometimes causes me to throw a spear, I don't know. And why the game randomly locks me in place until I throw an arbitrary number of spears, I really don't know. Little Ninja. This is a sports game. Go with it. It's like a rail shooter, but all you have is a sword. In that regard, I could compare it to Flash of the Blade, or Blade of Honor, which were decent if the arcade machine was working properly. The problem is, this is the LexaBook 201 game console. If more than one enemy is on screen, the game slows to a crawl. And while enemies are supposed to attack in a set sequence, sometimes that sequence gets broken and more than one enemy tries attacking at the same time. The controls are horrible. You're supposed to swing in any direction to attack, but I found myself violently shaking the controller just to get one attack to register. When that didn't work, I'd usually end up taking multiple hits. The one thing that did work consistently was defending by holding down, but that automatically stops if you defend for too long. There were a couple special attacks which work... sometimes. One performs several slashes to whoever's in front of you. The other is a goddamn Naruto Jutsu attack, which, I guess, is supposed to hit everything on screen. But it won't hit an enemy if they're leaving the screen, in mid-air, or directly in front of you. At least judging by the level screen, there are only five or six levels, and after each one, your performance gets ranked. I thought Primary Ninja was the best one, but at some point I got Senior Ninja. So I have no idea how this works. 
Well, at least I managed to complete the final li- Uh, well, maybe there's something new about these li No, no, it's the same thing with the same four enemies as the rest of the game, but with different backgrounds. Moving on! <sighs> Hold on, is this guy long jumping on the racetrack? Because that's a great way to break your ass. Again. Waggle to run, hold up to jump, and pick the angle. So easy, I almost immediately broke the record. Before I show the next game, called Magic Fairy, again, somehow a sports game, I want to ask you a question. What's the worst kind of game you could have motion controls for? How about a shoot 'em up Specifically, how about a shoot 'em up where shooting is tied to shaking the controller? If your arm doesn't hurt just thinking about it, mine does just remembering it. Hit detection is suspect at best, though that can often work in your favor and sometimes you can't move and shoot at the same time. Shooting too much can make it hard to see items or enemy projectiles. And is it just me or does the boss music sound like someone ripping off Star Fox's Corneria music? Bosses take so long to explode that more enemies spawn and fight you until it's done. Then you get the top score because they couldn't be bothered putting in fake ones. That happens all the way to the end of the game, which doesn't take long because there are only four stages. Well, at least there is an end. Ping pong- oh hey, we're back to actual sports now. I can say the AI doesn't hit the extremes of way too good or way too stupid, but it does look goofy sliding around behind the table. You can sort of aim shots with forehand and backhand shots by holding the left and right arrow while swinging. Sort of. I say sort of because it doesn't always work, and there's about a 1 in 4 chance of your swing not registering. I think swinging too early causes the ball to go off the table, and timing swings just right causes a power shot to happen, but I couldn't get either to happen consistently so I don't know. Rock climbing, because Laura Croft's distant cousin, Lauren Kraft, has nothing better to do. Alright, let's go! Been a while since I've heard that one. You have three lives to reach the top of a cliff, which you lose by reaching for a rock too far away, having the rock you're holding give way, or, and I really don't understand this, trying to grab a rock you're already holding. And no, lives don't reset between stages. And yes, the generic in-game baseline and the three-second menu loop do get annoying really fast. Oddly enough, this game has the most complicated control so far, but they work! They actually work! Unfortunately, the slow pace of the game makes it really dull. The one thing I don't get is how the guy in the training stage is able to leap up to higher rocks, but whenever I tried it, I would fall. Rope skipping is- oh hey, it's the girl from the tennis game! Rope skipping is a jump rope game which starts off in an aperture science lab before moving outside to a sentient rope which you flick the controller to jump over. That's the only thing you can do in this game. And it's unresponsive. These guys couldn't get a game with one control, one motion control to work, and yet, they put together that rock climbing game. There's no indication for how many times you can fall before getting the fail screen. But when you do fall, the game sounds like an old Tex Avery cartoon. Step Aerobics is a game which thinks it has a Wii Fit balance board, but it doesn't. After choosing one of two songs, are there any rhythm games on this thing with more than two songs? You mash the up and down arrows on either controller to the beat. Except you don't, because the arrows and the music move at different tempos. You don't even waggle the controller, so I'm not sure how this is burning any calorics. And if you don't have the controllers aimed right at the console, the game drops inputs constantly, so good luck getting a decent score. Swimming is as confusing as it is exhausting. It has a demo showing the controls for freestyle swimming, but not for the other two strokes, the butterfly and the breaststroke. 
Sorry, Backstroke, you weren't cool enough to be an Alexa book game. Freestyle has you swing the controllers up to move, but I couldn't seem to get it to work without hitting up on the D-pad as well. For the butterfly, I just guessed and did the outside-in motion of the stroke while hitting up, and on the breaststroke, I did the inside-out motion while hitting up, and both seemed to work. Each stroke has a preliminary, semi-final, and final race, so you're all but guaranteed to kill your arms if you try to do all three. How you doing, everybody? I just played the Lexabook swimming game, and boy, are my arms tired! Oh, and there's this again. The UI makes no sense. Mostly because the graphics are so bad, I can't even read what that thing in the upper left corner is supposed to be. I don't know why it shows a player one indicator when this is a single player game and the camera is always focused on you. I don't know why it implies you can win all three gold medals at once when they reset every time you start a different race. And I don't know how the girl manages to take off her goggles twice during the podium animations. That brings us to... Sword of Warrior. Are we still in the sports section? Alright, alright, just making sure. I swear that's the same flame effect from the fencing game earlier. But anyway, this poor man's golden axe... Okay, more like homeless and starving man's golden axe... has the faintest glimmer of a competent game in it. Swings register just fine despite being tied to a motion control, but hit detection seems completely random at points. And I swear I've heard some of these grunt sounds in other games, much less other Lexabook games. Ah, damn it! Trampoline! Trampoline! You said what now? Trampoline has you pick one of two characters and repeatedly stamp on the flag of Scotland. The demo shows how to bounce higher, but doesn't explain how tricks work which is by entering a bunch of random quick-time directions. Inputs for D-pad directions drop frequently, but the clockwise and counterclockwise motions are by far the least consistent. All you can do is enter tournament mode, which consists of one round and a high score screen before immediately ending. I had more fun just sitting at the character select screen and switching between characters over and over. Hi, I'm Mike. Hi, I'm Ika. 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 Damn it, Wade! Running requires two controllers, which the game doesn't mention, and then all jumps are done with the up button on the first one. I only played it once and demolished the record. Variety show is awful in just about every conceivable way. You pick a clown with a terrible voice sample. Wow! Oh yeah! Then balance on a ball while people throw things at you, which I'm guessing is something that happens to clowns a lot. And you're supposed to catch and juggle them by flicking the first and second controllers while also using the D-pad to move side to side. These inputs flat out don't work. I frequently wound up with one arm stuck in the catch and throw motion, repeatedly had inputs not work and dropped whatever I was juggling, and sometimes I even got the controls to work, but the item I was trying to juggle fell through my arm anyway. And you do this for two and a half minutes straight. That may not sound like much, but here it feels almost as long as a Metal Gear Solid cutscene. Hell is real. Take both controllers and swing them around like a dumbass. Doesn't really matter how you swing them, just do something and you'll win. By a huge margin. Congratulations! You have broken the record! Well, that was it. That was all the games in the sports section. And we still have over 150 games to go. The fun section actually has three fun. different sections with game listings. The main menu, More. the game player, and the more game section. Player. One of the main menu games is Solitaire. I never thought I'd say this about a card game, but these controls are awful. The game sometimes automatically moves the cursor to different cards, and you can easily end up moving to the menu by accident and resetting or exiting the game. There are no options to change the card designs or number of cards dealt from the stock, and there's no timer or way to keep score. In other words, 
This version of Solitaire is inferior not just to whatever version is on your current operating system, it's inferior to the version of Solitaire packed with Windows 3.1. Remember what happened when you won at that game? How the cards would fly out one by one, leaving streaking card patterns across the field of play? What happens when you win at Lexabook Solitaire? Oh. All Blaster is that Marble Blast game you see on tablets and bars played by designated drivers and grandmothers. Aiming with the clunky D-pad is harder than it should be, and sometimes balls end up positioned in places it seems they shouldn't based on where they hit. There are power-ups, but outside of the one that pauses the balls and the bomb which blows up several of them, I couldn't tell what most of them did. That music loop doesn't help either. Could be worse, it could have been the calculator music again. Well, I thought we left this music back in the sports section! Square is Tetris. Really boring Tetris. I guess it's official, Ubisoft isn't the only developer to screw up Tetris. Aside from slamming pieces to the bottom of the screen, all movement feels like it's delayed. There are columns on the screen which help you line up drops, but that's the game's only redeeming quality. You play as one of the characters from the bowling game, each of which has stats which don't matter and don't make sense. How does permanence help a person make lines? There is no music of any sort. The enemy you play against in single player game over is way too quickly. Nothing special happens if you get a Tetris, and the game doesn't progress quickly enough to stay interesting. In other Tetris games, it usually takes 10 lines to go up a level. Here, it takes over 40. Over 40. I needed over 7 minutes to hit level 1. Oh, and you have to hit up to turn pieces. None of the face buttons are used. Well, now this is just straight up theft. Not only does it have the name Puzzle Bobble and act as essentially the same game as Puzzle Bobble, it even uses pitch-shifted audio files from the real Puzzle Bobble. I don't know who the hell you are, kid, but go home. We want the dinosaurs. It doesn't keep score, has no music, its visuals are on par with a freshman college art project, and it's really only challenging if you're colorblind, like me, and mix up some of the orbs. Now let's dig into the game player section. From this point on, most of the games ask that you play them by flipping the controller on its side. This is an unorganized mess, with a bunch of games listed in a seemingly random order, then another list below that of raw.wxn files. For the uninitiated, WXN files are bootleg encrypted Famicom ROM images originating from Weixing Education Technology in Fuzhou, China. Well, that explains the voiceovers and the Chinese files I found earlier. That doesn't look anything like the logo to the movie Robots. I don't know what you're talking about. Robot is Pac-Man, but a hell of a lot easier because it's generous with extra lives and a game over starts you wherever you left off. The trade-off is... The fruit is not optional. You collect all the dots... Nope, oh, sorry, they're called beans here and a piece of fruit to advance to the next level, which can be either a strawberry or... What is that? It... Is that a watermelon? There are several power-ups which can be used against the enemy, either to leave a smoke trail that damages them, a power pill style power-up, dynamite to wipe the screen of them, and an item that leaves enemies frozen. No, wait, sorry, it makes the monster frozen according to the help screen. Map design is pretty bad in later levels, as there are long dead ends where enemies frequently get stuck. Some areas also have what appear to be wide open areas it seems like you can move around more easily in, but you can't. Traps and warp portals are often dickishly placed, either cutting you off and forcing you into enemies, or warping you directly on top of them. And is it just me, or does this game use the sound from Super Mario World whenever Mario takes his last hit? Move Ball is a slow and clunky, but basic puzzle game. Move all the rocks into the glowing squares to go, yeah! yeah! 
It's functional and has a button you can hit to undo individual steps or reset the puzzle entirely, but I don't like these kinds of puzzles. Also, if you or a rock start on a glowing square, you won't know it's there. Mountain biking has... Wait, hold on. Why wasn't this in the sports section? Mountain biking has one thing going for it. The title screen. It's like Road Rash, but with no weapons or police, and with regular bikes, only three tracks and a time limit, at least on level mode. Stars boost your score or give you five extra seconds. Shields give you a temporary protective field and you can use it to ram other bikers. Lightning bolts give you a speed boost. What, you're acting like you've never seen a mountain bike with a magically appearing nitrous oxide injection system before. I can't say this game isn't in the sports section because it has no motion controls. Whenever you're hit, you have to swing the controller back and forth to try and regain your balance. Most of the time, this doesn't work. The goal is to get first place, but riders only appear in small groups, so it's tough to gauge where you're placed most of the time. That and riders you pass seem to vanish from existence. The game's biggest obstacle is that it doesn't run smoothly. At all. Steering is stiff as it is, but it's way worse whenever the game's frame rate takes a dive. Still, I did manage a couple races where my rider won, and got a cuff which turned him into a ghost. Okay, now it's Road Rash without weapons or police. You pick a pallet swapped racer and go through three courses, in order, trying to get first on each. The controls are actually okay, and the game runs fairly consistently. However, it does have several problems. The way obstacles come into view makes it difficult to tell where on the road they are. Many are also placed on the other side of a hill, so you can't see them coming. Even so, most obstacles won't cause you to crash, just slow you down. Slam into a haystack or a deer? You won't crash. Run into a log or a tractor? Oh, you are going down. The difficulty curve of this game is backwards. I was nearly flawless on the first race and only placed second. Meanwhile, on the last race, I took first place by the time lap 2 started and wound up winning by a huge margin. Not that it matters, because the podium is a generic JPEG which always shows the same racers in the same places, regardless of what color you picked or where you placed. Part of the reason the other racers do so well at this is that they phase through obstacles instead of crashing into them. Oh, and did I mention my favorite thing about this game is what each race sounds like? One, two, three, go! Mini Checkers is a variant of Checkers I've never seen before. First off, it's single player. Second, it has a diamond-shaped board and only has a couple spaces which don't have pieces in them. The goal is to jump over pieces to get rid of them until only one piece is left on the board. What? Well, hold on, I got the Mario World death jingle for winning? When you go up a level, it... Wait, hold on. Level 2 is the same as level 1. The board is just rotated 90 degrees to one side. Memory Card is a memory game. You get 10 seconds to see where everything is, then try to match everything within the time limit without making too many mistakes. There's really not much to say here other than listen to the victory jingle. We might as well end this part with a game I'm terrible at. Maze Adventure. You play as the same kid from Moveball, trying to get to the exit of a level while avoiding whatever this abomination is supposed to be. Every step you take, the enemy can take two steps. That thing on the ground? I don't know what it is, because I could never reach it. I tried going through and finding permutations where the monster wouldn't immediately catch up to me, but nothing I tried worked. Maybe I just wasn't thinking clearly because I absolutely hate these kinds of games. The level being so damn small does nothing to help matters, so... Fuck it! All this has done is make me want to play Tetris, Bubble Bobble, and Road Rash, so that's exactly what I'm going to do until the next part.
I hate myself for suggesting this as a video series. Let's keep plugging and playing, I guess. Imagination was in short supply when they named Magic Rectangle. Unfortunately, the same can also be said for the game. It's Breakout. Very slow breakout. I'm actually surprised to see what the UI at the bottom looks like, because on my TV screen, half of it was cut off. It's pretty sad when the robot arms that set up each stage are the best animated thing out of all the games so far. The paddle may look round, but it only deflects the ball in four different directions, and even then the ball doesn't bounce at the correct angle half the time. This holds true for the blocks and walls too, as at one point the ball got stuck bouncing sideways and I had to just wait for it to escape limbo. Even without this happening, I was so bored I nodded off after about 10 minutes. Welcome to Ice Hockey, a game so exciting the players look like they've overdosed on NyQuil. What's that? Why is Ice Hockey not in the sports section? Get out of here with that nonsense! Only games with gimmicky motion controls are considered sports. Choose between a wide variety of four teams. The Pittsburgh Ice Hockeys, the Minnesota Ice Hockeys, the Toronto Ice Hockeys, and lest we forget, the Detroit Ice Hockeys. Then play through three agonizing five-minute period. I, I mean sets, of course. It's tennis which has periods, not hockey. Why is it doing that? Marvel at how the players move like they just learned how to skate five minutes ago, reaching top speeds so slow they get lapped by the fucking Zamboni. Equally pathetic are the controls. When you have four face buttons to work with, the absolute best thing you can do is only use two of them and assign passing and stealing to the same input. That way, if the planets align and you actually get steals to work, you'll immediately throw the puck away. Gaze in awe as the game switches the player you control despite not touching the swap button. No matter who you play though, your shot at maximum power is so slow and ineffective you'd swear you were actually playing as Montreal. Even worse than them are the goalies. If the players are stuck moving at bullet time speeds, then the goalie's reaction time is as fast as groundwater. Any shot within 10 feet of the net is nearly guaranteed to get in the net. It doesn't even have to be aimed at the net as the puck can just phase through the side and still count. Sure, it sucks when it happens to you, but the fans absolutely love it. Just listen to how excited they are to witness this spectacle. To be fair, that's what most Arizona Coyotes games sound like. Fair warning, there will be two appalling things happening at once in the next game's title screen. What the fuck is that? Pick the pro-choice argument you can tolerate the most and throw boulders at mice before they crawl into the holes. Yeah, not sure why the start of graphics shows a hammer, you just throw rocks the entire time. Nothing especially bad, but nothing especially fun either. Highway Racing. It's Spy Hunter without guns and either a way smaller road or way bigger cars. Dodge cars and get to the end before fuel runs out, but if you touch the walls, you explode and lose a lot of gas. Never mind all those cops getting run off the road, we have unknown places to go and ambiguous things to do! Levels are annoyingly long, but you can get a bit of fuel back by... Slamming into gas trucks? I won't even attempt to understand that. Or how if you knock other cars into the tankers, they can pick up the gas. I'm still wrapping my head around how this is what the last level looks like. Two tiny lanes and no room to dodge anything. Not that it matters because highway racing is only three levels long, so at least it's quick, if not painless. Why does the cat have a patch of hair? Greedy Cat is a puzzle game where you skewer matching fish to hit a point goal for each stage. You can have up to seven or eight fish on the skewer at once, so you can save some while matching others. There are also two powers with cooldowns available. One which clears off the skewer, and one which eliminates a column of fish. The game drags because it splits levels into five stages, but it can be played at a fast pace, and aside from the picky timing for the skewer sometimes, it plays just fine. You know what? I hereby dub this... not so bad. Wow! Wow. 
grab rocks, gold, and gems so you can buy stuff to get more rocks, gold, and gems. That's assuming you can aim well for the smaller stuff because the hitbox for the claw itself is ridiculously small. There are items you can buy like- What the fuck are you?! Like explosives to blow up something you accidentally grabbed and don't want, but aside from that and the passive skills, half the items have no explanation for how to use them. Just don't get something worth too many points or you get to hear that rabbit shriek from the ski game again. No, you're doing it wrong. It's like this. Wow! <laughs> Even so, the rewards and level limits are completely out of line. By level 11, I was able to do absolutely nothing and still meet the target for the next stage. Which I also did absolutely nothing in and still passed. Even in the following stage, I did nothing and was only a few hundred dollars short of the target goal. Well, at least it didn't play when I won, like in that Checkers game. Wow. Who's up for some kinda sorta bootleg Contra? Future Warrior is an isometric shooter where you sometimes pilot a really cheap looking mech. Your first instinct is to take the mech whenever possible because it has a health bar and a wider shooting range. It also collects other mechs to replenish said health bar. Sadly, it's a much bigger target and depending on which mech you select, You'll get either one which shoots large balls of energy, which look like they were made with the MS Paint spray tool, which are kind of strong but kind of suck because their fire rate is so slow. Or you'll get one with a wider shot which is so weak you'd be better off getting out of the mech to shoot anything. The mechs are also ridiculously weak, as ordinary soldiers can take off significant chunks of health from them. On foot you can roll dodge, but that seems to just be a speed boost more than an actual dodge. Also, the game says dodging is done by double tapping, but it's actually assigned to the B button. On the other hand, the game actually has an ending, even if it's just saying you finish the game, but on the other, this is what it sounds like when you finish a level. Just to be clear, I'm not docking points for using Final Fantasy music. I'm docking points for using Final Fantasy VIII music. That counter should probably be higher, because other people who have watched the past videos pointed out things lifted from other games that I didn't recognize. And if you start counting things that are reused across multiple games on this thing, well... I mean... That's a video I don't want to make in a world I don't want to live in. Fruit Link is an unremarkable puzzle game where you match fruit tiles. They have to be either next to each other or have a clear path to each other, or you can't match them. As such, sometimes the game will start up in ways that make it impossible to win. A versus mode and co-op can't save you at that point, because who would play this with you aside from the excited dad on the box art? Forest Adventure. It's Adventure Island. But you're able to stop running and your life counter starts- Holy shit, really? After using the Star of David to see where the next level is, and no, that's not a sentence I expected to say in my lifetime. You run forward and try to dodge or destroy every enemy in the way. That's easier said than done because for whatever reason there is a massive input delay on the controls and it changes as the game goes on. Sometimes it's barely noticeable and sometimes it's approaching a full second before the jump button does anything. I also got sick of the cartoon sound effect mashup death sounds in a hurry. <laughs> Flying Rab- oh my god, this rabbit somehow looks worse than the one from the skiing game. Fly through a bunch of stages blasting enemies with your weapons you somehow have. Or maybe that shit-eating grin is somehow shooting everything. I thought the levels were really long, but they're actually four minutes or less apiece. It turns out the game is just that boring. Enemies show up in small groups, and there's a long pause before the next wave shows up. They're never a threat because power-ups are constantly showing up, and the charge attack can wipe out anything except bosses in one hit. It also goes through multiple enemies, and recharges ridiculously fast. On top of all that, you get an extra life for collecting 20 carats, meaning you'll get at least 4 extra lives every level. Even as someone who's no good at shoot 'em ups I had over 20 lives by level 4. Bosses offer no challenge, and are just regular enemies upscaled and given a slightly different attack. And even if you do get hit, you just start back up sans one power-up, which you can immediately get back. Well, at least there were only eight levels of... 
there's an arrow. Implying there are more than eight levels. Well, I'm done here. If you thought the earlier puzzle games were too slow-paced, Five Diamonds says, hold my beer. Match five colored diamonds over and over and over until all spaces are filled or you hit the target score, depending on what mode you're on. They appear every time you make a move by selecting a diamond and sliding it across the stage with the start button. Why do these games keep using the start button when the X and Y buttons aren't used at all? If I had to guess, it's probably because these games were designed for a console with fewer buttons. Oh no. Oh god, don't tell me these games showed up on another console. Clearance mode has a couple items you can use, one being a hat which removes one gem from the field, and a bomb which takes out all gems of a single color. These can be bought after each stage, though it implies you can buy several of them even though you can only ever have one. There's a catch though. Those points you earned in the previous stage? They don't carry over. So when you buy either item, you start the stage with a negative score. Buying both starts you 1,100 points in the hole. Fortunately, the music will have already put you to sleep, so you won't be too mad about that. How can any game hope to live up to a name like Firebolt Swordman? I'll give it this much, it's the best shoot 'em up on the console so far. For whatever that's worth. You choose between two lazily named protagonists, J.H. and J.X. What kind of person just has a string of letters as their name? And shoot your way through four levels. Even with my self-professed ineptitude at shoot 'em ups I got through this in one try in under 15 minutes. That's not to say this game doesn't have a lot of problems. There are only three music tracks in the whole game, one of which is the same track Magic Fairy used for bosses. The bomb counter can only go up to five. Depending on the stage, some attacks can blend into the background. Bosses all have the same movement and attack pattern with only slightly different attacks. Sometimes hitboxes flat out don't work, and when you back up, it's the same animation as taking damage. Also, this is the item pickup sound. At least the backgrounds are a bit more dynamic, moving up and down as the level progresses, and the two characters do have slightly different bomb attacks, even if they end up behaving the same way. They also get their own victory screens. Whenever I see them, all I can think is... and... Muffy Buffy, Biff Jr. and I are going on our Sunday drive. Oh no you ain't! You're gonna play! Extreme F1. Somehow not as impactful despite having the word extreme in the title. This is pole position. It's not even trying to hide it, it's pole position. Down to the low and high gear shifting which the game never explains how to do. There's no actual pole position though, and the game doesn't track what place you're in. You just finish two laps before the clock runs out and move on to the next course. There are a decent number of courses, but in each of the three modes, you eventually hit a course where the lap counter breaks and you can't finish the race. At least the other games kicked back to the title screen at the end instead of putting me in an unwinnable situation. Oh, and the sound is almost as bad as that motorcycle game. Dr. Genius, a remarkably generic puzzle-solving game. Get to the end goal by pushing and pulling various objects and avoiding traps. It's every bit as unremarkable as the main character looks, despite there being a good number of levels. The only noteworthy thing is how well this guy reacts to a several dozen foot fall. Oh. Dinosaur Factory, where dreams go to die. Assemble a set amount of dinosaurs on a conveyor belt before any part hits the end. Otherwise, it's game over. You have to assemble the ones the kids at the bottom of the screen ask for by putting together all four limbs, a torso, and a head. Each limb is unique, but they all look so similar it's hard to tell them apart. Also, once you put some items together, they can't be separated, even if they're just a pair of limbs held together by an imaginary skeleton. 
add in that you always have a piece selected, so I frequently combined parts by accident when I wanted to just select a different one. The only thing more annoying than that is the sound the dinosaurs make when they're fully assembled. <laughs> There are power-ups to stop and rewind the conveyor belt, but those have a tendency to lock the cursor in place, eliminating the point of using them in the first place. There are way too many levels in this if the overworld map is anything to go by. A map which looks like someone borrowed decorations from Pee-wee's Playhouse. The last nail in the bootleg coffin is something specific to me and anyone else who's colorblind. Beyond level 5, I couldn't tell the difference between two of the colors, all but making it impossible to play. And now for the crazy trilogy! Which sadly does not include Crazy Taxi or Rip Off Thereof. Crazy Step is Qbert. No, really, look, it's Qbert, but with more convoluted maps and way slower. Even the amount of points you get for each cube is the same as Qbert. And they reuse the character from Dr. Genius. Speaking of reused, the backgrounds are some of the same generic images I've been seeing in the backgrounds of several puzzle games. You know what else is reused? Crazy Lamb. This is just about shooting wolves, or their balloons, before they either shoot the lamb or sabotage the gears making the lift work. The bulk of the game is a monotonous slog, just hanging out at the bottom of the screen while holding down the fire button. The power-up for rapid fire makes this an even more viable strategy. Don't get hit even once though, otherwise you'll have to start the stage over. Every 10 levels there's a boss with no discernible patterns for movement or attacks, other than a bullet and a missile with minor heat seeking to it. Have I mentioned I can actually feel myself dying as I go from game to game? Just thought I'd throw that out there. Lastly, there's Crazy Fish, or as I like to think of it, Boar. Get it? It's Spore, but with a B. Boar. Seriously, it's like Spore, but with fish and without the customization or the evolving environment. You eat small fish so you can grow up and eat bigger fish, which can include really tiny sharks and orcas, until the game tells you to stop. Just like the other crazy games, there are way too many levels in Crazy Fish for you to begin to care about what the ending might look like. You often won't be able to see what's slightly off screen because of the bad camera, so you'll likely get eaten by bigger fish or run into depth charges just out of view. It's a new level of boring when the most interesting thing about a game is that it doesn't know how to spell game over. And that brings us to Cheese Maze. Now, with a name like Cheese Maze, you might expect to see something like a mouse navigating a giant maze made out of cheese. Certainly not a mutant cyclops baby with the voice of a trumpet trying to navigate very small cheese rooms. Well, that's exactly what Cheese Maze is. The one nice thing I can say is that when you're down to one life, it shrinks your character model and hitbox. Other than that, this is a shit show. It recycles two music tracks from prior games which alternate between each level. The cheese obstacles, even when they aren't active, still damage you. The extra lives counter maxes out at three. The rooms are so small you can complete some of them in seconds, but that's assuming you don't get screwed over because the wall obstacles are entirely random. I had the same amount of success waiting for a clear space to walk through as I did running at them and hoping they didn't hit me. CHARGE! Did they somehow misspell the title of this game? Kate Match is Bejeweled or Candy Crush or any other variant of the Switch One Puzzle Piece Around and Make Matches of Three game which I absolutely loathe. Clear out the blue squares to win, which sometimes requires clearing immovable blocks. There's supposed to be a hammer item which appears when you match them up and allows you to clear out one space, but it usually just appears whenever it feels like it instead of when matching hammers on the board. Also, don't ask me how the timer works, because every time I looked, the hourglass hadn't changed. This is also around the time I realized the batteries in the controller were nearly dead. For those keeping score, we're a little over one-third of the way through these games, and I'm already out three AAA batteries. Oh god, what is this? I thought this was called Candy Bear, not... Oh, 
God, it's just cheese maze again, isn't it? Okie dokie. It's... It's a Mario clone. The level layouts, enemies, level counter, and power-ups are the same as Super Mario Bros. and the sounds and music are lifted or badly edited from Super Mario World, Mario 64, or All-Stars. If I counted every individual asset, the counter would explode, so I'm going to be generous and only increase it by 50. I may or may not be making up for ones I missed, but anyway. The in-game level counter and the level graphic don't match, but that's the least of this game's problems. Jumping feels flat out wrong, as sometimes your momentum completely dies when you try to do it. This is only made worse by there being no way to run and severely limited mid-air control. Every level ends with a flag, but instead of wandering into a castle, the bear rockets into space, presumably so it can die on the way to its home planet. Actually, I shouldn't say every level. See, the pipes don't do anything in this game. So in, say, the underwater stages, where walking and swimming are the same speed and underwater currents don't exist, you hit the edge of the map and the stage just ends. King Koopa fights are dull slogs where you spam quote-unquote fireballs until the thing dies, because it can't be damaged otherwise. Getting hit means having to wait for the power-ups to reappear before spamming more fireballs. I can't recognize that sound, but it sounds like something from a Donkey Kong Country game. Did I mention the level music doesn't stop playing, even when the death jingle is going at the same time? As shocking as this may sound, Bubble Boy is another Puzzle Bobble clone. This time though, it doesn't engage in the same brand of asset theft as the other Puzzle Bobble clone. This includes a gauge on the left, which never moves. An invisible timer for each move because the one on screen just counts the time it takes to complete each stage. No clear line for when a game over happens. And the ability to explore bubbles around. I didn't have the same colorblindness problem as the other one, but this game makes up for that by making the boy mildly terrifying after every stage cleared. Bricks Climber, because it's nowhere near cool enough to be Ice Climbers. But it's pretty much the same game. Climb the stage, scrap the bricks, make it to the top and advance while not staring at the sun because it's self-conscious about its ugliness. I swear the jingles and sounds used in this game sound familiar, but I can't place what exactly they're from. Aside from reusing enemies and songs from prior games, the camera sometimes refuses to pan up. That can mean hitting obstacles which either spawn on top of you, or which you couldn't see, and losing a life. Possibly more than one, because there's no invulnerability on respawn. Super Bomberman- I, I mean, Bomb Superman, starring that one boy from the crappy puzzle games earlier. The perfect game for anyone who ever said, I like Bomberman, but I would like it more if it were a lot slower. Also, I want the B button to cause bombs to explore. There were only six levels with the same one enemy randomly pathing everywhere, but later levels get wide open and make it hard to effectively go after them. <laughs> Blazing Fighter, a game which is even less interesting than the name suggests. Pick one of five fighters, then face all of them. I jokingly picked the shortest one so everyone's attacks would go over my head, then it actually happened and I easily won several rounds. That's still not a worse design choice than having light kick assigned to the start button, or having a light and heavy kick, but only a light punch, or each character having one name in the selection menu and a different one during the fights, or flat out not saying how to do special moves or supers or being able to win every match with either jump kicks or move spamming. At least until the mirror match when we just traded special moves the entire time. I'm as enthusiastic about this game as the announcer is. On the spot. 
Hit the goal. Nine ball. It's nine ball. It works, it's just really boring. All I can say about this is, why is Little Town of Bethlehem playing in the background? Is it Christmas in this billiard hall? Wolf is coming. Get your mind out of the gutter. Get all the pigs to the entrance before time runs out, all the while trying not to get hit by the larger pigs. This game is... actually, it's okay. By comparison to everything else on this console, I mean. The larger pigs throw apples to stun you, which gets quite annoying when there are two or more of them. Don't worry, though, because there's an item which can, and I quote, suspend the pig's offensive. Or you can just sneak up and knock them out, whatever works. The idea is to focus less on grabbing the pigs, and more on steering them toward the goal before picking them up which is either a decent design choice, or a decent design choice made completely by accident. Even the stuff that's flat out broken is broken in the player's favor, like how the large pig enemies will get stuck in their walk cycle, walk through the environment, and exit the stage entirely. All in all, I didn't come out of this game wanting to lob the console into a volcano, so it's head and shoulders above most of the other games. That includes Western Hero, a Western game with a... Rap soundtrack? This is Sunset Riders' setting with Metal Slug's gameplay. No, really. You can rescue hostages like in Metal Slug, get items from them like in Metal Slug, and attack with a knife at close range like in Metal Slug. It also lifts the enemy getting shot sound effects from Goldeneye. <laughs> I know those sounds are from other things too, but that's what I know them from. There were only two weapons, a slow-to-fire rifle and the much faster dual pistols picked up from hostages which have finite ammo. It doesn't matter much though, the pistol shots, rifle shots, and knife attack all do the same amount of damage. Making matters worse is that the rifle's rate of fire is broken. If you move while shooting, the delay is completely gone, so just hold forward and mash the fire button. This makes it pretty easy to burn through enemies and bosses, even if it does result in a couple of naked gun moments. The one positive out of all this is that the game is only 4 levels long and can be completed in under 15 minutes. Trust me, that is a positive. Wave Man, starring that one kid from the Puzzle Bobble clone earlier. It's basically Mario Brothers without the pipes, or the pow blocks, or fire, and with a bizarre ball gimmick. Ball! Enemies are defeated by turning them into balls and knocking them around the screen. And you can somehow get stuck in them. Every once in a while an upscaled enemy masquerading as a boss shows up. And that's the one remotely interesting thing about this game. Well, unless you count enemies falling through the stage. Or the ability to have more four power. And the game just ends after about 18 minutes and 10 levels. Not even a congratulations screen like the other games. And lastly, we have the mouse and the cat. Did Jerry just eat? Fuck it! I'm done! There's a part four! It's not happening anytime soon! Fucking 30 games of video, what was I thinking? Bullshit. There probably will be a part four. Why did I agree to Why did I suggest this? We're still plugging and playing, despite my regular requests to stop.
the 100 level, starring that same kid from the Bomberman clone and the rock puzzle game among several others. Jump up 100 floors with a series of platforms, conveyor belts, and spiked platforms without running out of lives. You do this across four leaves, and if it looks like I'm doing pretty well, that's because I learned quickly to slam down the buttons for moving and jumping as hard as possible. On my first try, I ran out of lives halfway through leave one, because this game loves to eat jump and movement inputs, and movement has a weird delay to it most of the time. Though even with that problem, and an annoyingly long stun animation when hit by anything, my controller hostile strategy led to finishing the game in less than 15 minutes. The Tarot Maze. So is this a maze made out of cards that try to tell your future, or... It's an RPG. And it's starring that same kid from before, but he's wearing armor this time. No, 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 let's not gloss over that. There's an RPG on this console. Now, of all the game genres you can think of, the ones that require the least amount of time and effort to make, RPGs? Not high on that list. So either someone put some modicum of effort into this, or it's going to fall apart really quickly. Go rescue a princess by getting some magic thing from the seventh floor. There is combat in this game, but it's entirely math-based. You run into an enemy, and the damage you take every turn is the enemy's attack rating minus your defense, and vice versa for the damage they take. You have zero input on how each fight goes. You have to collect a bunch of color-coded keys to get through each door, various items to boost your defense and attack, and... chug vials of blood to regain health? Am I playing as Kid Dracula? Experience and gold buy stat boosts and health from random vendors, who look like the guy from the Qbert clone earlier. But you have to be careful about how everything gets spent. See, the game won't let you fight enemies that would kill you. So if you run out of experience and gold, and have a monster blocking your path which you aren't strong enough to fight, congratulations! Your game is unwinnable. There's no save feature either, so if this happens at any point, including right before the seventh floor, you have to start over. Tales of Treasures. I won't go over all 14 pages of instructions for this game, so here's the gist of it. Mine all the gold, then go through the door which magically appears somewhere. Using and collecting items to solve puzzles is assigned to the same button with a directional input. Man, if only this controller had two other buttons to assign one of those functions to. The game's biggest problem is that the levels are just annoying to figure out. Not knowing where the door appears usually means getting stuck in an unwinnable situation after collecting all the gold and having to start over repeatedly. Doesn't matter though, the level select screen is completely broken. You can skip right to the final stage of the game and wait, is that a Dragon Quest slime? Table Hockey. I'll give it this much, it's realistic. Most of the goals I scored were own goals by the CPU, and most of the goals the CPU scored were own goals by me. I swear though that on some of these goals the puck just went right through my paddle. Yep. The AI doesn't actually try to score. It will just hit the puck straight forward if you leave it to its own devices. The CPU doesn't try to win games so much as not lose them. Sword Soul. Nah, this intro track is all wrong. Let me fix that. A tale of souls and swords, eternally retold. Play as one of five characters recycled from previous games. The stats, if you can read them, don't mean anything, as long as you spend forward and remember to defend automatically when you are offended. Face all the other characters and a clone of yourself at the... Uh, is her palette swap the Wii Fit Trainer? Aside from the game being slow and occasionally eating inputs, some controls are just awkward like mashing all the buttons on the D-pad and A to do a unique skill. The AI is so well put together that it can be cheesed to death in two different ways, projectile spamming and jump attack spamming. Both work just as well. Submarine Battle. Drop missiles on subs until the game tells you to stop. Even with a few bombs to clear the screen, eventually there are just so many subs attacking you, it's way too hard to prevent your big, slow battleship from taking hits. 
It's also difficult to aim as there's no frame of reference on the ship for where the missile will drop from. You only have three lives to get through 15 stages of this, and those 15 stages are all... the same. Just with a higher score to hit. If you run out, it's game over, oh excuse me, gamai over, and you go all the way back to the start. Special Mission. Tell me from this intro what you think the game will be like. On second thought, don't. It's Contra. The gameplay is Contra, the player character is from Contra, the lives are from Contra, even the levels themselves are from Contra. This sound effect, though, is from Star Fox 64. They couldn't do the levels where you run away from the screen, though, so instead, they're elevator sections. And the same wall turrets boss gets recycled multiple times. Hey, remember the alien boss from level 3? What does it look like in this? <laughs> Space War. What unique and innovative it's Space Invaders. Space Invaders with a couple sentences of plot which somehow got through Google Translate almost unscathed. Most power-ups are self-explanatory, but why is the boulder power-up shaped like a paintbrush? I guess if you like Space Invaders you might be able to tolerate this, but it's actually a lot slower than the original arcade version from 1978. I was falling asleep at the wheel or the control wheel, or control stick, or whatever's in the cockpits of these ships. Sleepwalking. It's a puzzle game where you try to get a late night snack as fast as possible. The doors swing according to the directions marked on the ground, and only when you move a certain direction past them. Later stages add in floor switches, which also require moving a certain way to activate them. Like Space War, I simply got bored way too fast to begin to care about this. I resorted to trying to wake this guy up by having him tumble into the abyss. Running is YOU AGAIN! Avoid getting caught for a set amount of time by holding right and pressing jump now and then. I don't know what throws me off more, the square fruit in the background, or that you get the wolf to back off by lobbing grenades at him. Aside from it being rather slow for a game called running, ledge detection is a bit off so you'll have plenty of chances to appreciate the Game Over music. Raindrop Adventure You know how Space War was Space Invaders but a lot slower? Welcome to Load Runner, but a lot slower. Grab all the raindrops and get to the exit while avoiding enemies, usually by opening holes in the ground. I'm long past the point where all I can really say is, it's a worse version of another game. And there are still over 100 games left. So this is what purgatory looks like. What in bootleg hell is a rabbit slipe? Oh, rabbit slide! Think Super Monkey Ball, but with a rabbit and no fun. You have five lives to get through ten stages, collecting a set number of golden jugs and hitting an exit arrow. All the while, you have to listen to the sound of dripping water as you move. The game is both way too easy and way too annoying. It's hard to fall off most paths because the rabbit never moves all that fast. But there are tons of split paths and teleporters beyond the first couple stages, which are there specifically to waste your time. You can't tell which path goes where until it's already too late, and get forced to backtrack several times. Then the game throws in jumps! I have a better time understanding Mandarin Chinese than I do how momentum works in this game, because sometimes the rabbit just stops in midair and falls off the stage, and sometimes he keeps all his speed and flies way too far, and sometimes I would land it and not know what I did right to avoid dying. This asshole again? I thought we were done with this kid! Perfect Thief has you run through a room full of spiked balls and monsters, grab a trophy, and finish getting to the other side. Despite the help screen saying I could move only up or up and left, you can in fact move in eight directions. Slowly, but you can move in eight directions. There's horrendous lag on the controls. Turns don't register fast enough when you need to make precise jumps, though that assumes that the jumps work at all. You're supposed to double tap A to do a longer double somersault jump, 
but hitting A once frequently registers as hitting it twice. Add in that the difficulty ramps up way too fast, and this game is an absolute mess. It's to the point that the AI in the demo video can't get past the first jump of level 4. Overspeed Racing It combines the look of a low-rent PlayStation game with the sound of a low-rent NES game. Also, the turning sound is the same as the one in RC Pro-Am. Like the other racing game, you're supposed to slam into tanker trucks to refill your fuel. Oh, did I say fuel? I meant the timer. Unless this happens to be a car which uses fuel by the second, even when it's not moving. And its gas tank loses gallons of fuel when it hits anything. Also, treasure chests refill your fuel. Can you just dump anything into this car's gas tank like Mr. Fusion and it'll run? This would be tolerable, if not for the semis. They always try to block you, and more often than not, you'll waste more fuel trying to slow down and get around them than by just ramming them off the road. I'm just kidding, it would suck regardless. I would never want to drive through this dystopian nightmare world where the streets are littered with trash cans and boulders, and I have to knock off gas trucks to survive- Holy shit, this is a Mad Max game. At least there were only three tracks, so this was over in less than ten minutes. Stop using this kid, I am so sick of seeing him. Ninja Hero. oh, um, excuse me. Ninja Hero is the same assets from that ninja rail shooter used to make a side-scrolling beat-em-up. Holy shit, this game drops inputs like Corey Coleman drops passes. It doesn't help you have to double tap up or down to do special attacks or the screen nuking special, but even things like jumping attacks only seem to work half the time. Just to add insult to injury, if you fall off a platform at any height, even if the ground is just a couple feet below you, it's an instant death. The only positive here is that bosses can easily get corner spam. I know that's not a positive in most cases, but for this game, I will take whatever I can get. I know how this is going to sound, given everything we've seen to this point, but... <sighs> These games are about to get a lot worse. Step aside, track and field, it's time for 110 hurdles! I assume there's supposed to be a meter somewhere in the title. Anyone who complains about rubber banding in games like Mario Kart needs to play this. I lost a race with a time of about 13 seconds, and won the next race with a time of over 15 seconds. Every other game on this console is a WXN file. In layman's terms, they're NES ROMs. Because they're actually running on a cheap emulator, these games have three save and load states, which get wiped out once you exit the game. The controls for each title usually aren't explained, and some are so low quality they look more like Atari 5200 ROMs. And yes, that is how they fit the rest of the games on the micro SD card. <laughs> Tell what's left of your eardrums, I said, you're welcome. The sound is so poorly programmed in 2D Escape, it keeps scrambling whenever a sound effect plays. on the grid without getting hit by the missiles, while destroying all of them. You do this by getting them to run into each other or... Targets? Crosshairs? Water valve? What are these? Well, I know what they and this game aren't. Fun. I could do the eardrums joke for every game left on this thing and it would still work. Access Block is Bejeweled, or any other matching puzzle game, if it had controls that frequently don't select blocks when you click on them. You need 200 points to pass level 1. No thanks. Add em Up is a number puzzle in which you add up surrounding numbers to equal the number in the drop tile. Except when you don't, and it works anyway. Look, I like math. Alright, I was in advanced placement courses for it in middle and high school, and I like the occasional number puzzle in a game. But a game that is nothing but math puzzles that isn't number munchers or math blaster? Get that weak shit out of here! Ether Fighter. 
or if Missile Command were both more advanced and not fun. You move a turret along the bottom of the screen and shoot down incoming ships. If too much shit is on the screen, the game lags and the music stutters. This somehow feels even slower than it looks. There's a gate to help block enemies flying down, but it doesn't cover the far sides or middle of the screen. Also, you don't get points for anything that crashes into it. I could only take about four minutes of this one, but I can say for sure that there are at least three stages to this game. Three agonizing stages. Air... I... all hero? Kill me now. I need to get used to not having a damn clue how to play these games, because from here on, it's a total crapshoot. Your crosshairs are also your ship. I guess. Because moving those away from the shots avoids them, even if they're at the center of the screen. You need to do this because for the entire game, you only have two hit points. The firing delay is massive, which only draws out each stage further as you try to spray and pray your way through all these terribly animated ships. There are six stages, the second of which is stage one somehow, and each has the same backdrop and terrain. Just awful. Alien is... is what, a movie by Ridley Scott? You pilot a boat in the water, and on land, and try to fight off invading ships. Each ship type has a certain amount of hit points and firepower, with the bigger ones able to fire faster, and certain power-ups upgrade your ship. Hit detection is terrible, and shots only seem to register consistently from the front. Side shots have about a 50-50 chance of not harmlessly passing through enemies. If an enemy reaches your base, which is what I'm assuming the patch of land at the bottom is, it's game over. Except for when they get nowhere near it, and you still game over. I don't know. Archer. It's the boring, easy version of Space Invaders. You're supposed to move around and hit all the birds, but I got through all nine levels in under five minutes by standing still and holding fire. Can we even call this guy an archer? He's just throwing the arrows, not shooting them. Archery. Try to beat the... the hello score? By firing at a moving target. This one actually has a bit of thought put into it, as you need to fire at a certain angle to hit the center of the target. The wind strength and direction is mostly random, and you have to account for both when timing shots. The catch is there is nothing to do beyond playing one round. One minute later, you've seen everything archery has to offer, and either mourned your loss, or don't give a shit. It's not pronounced how you think it is. Move Prospector Man around the map and hit as many open spaces as possible without going back over the same tiles. The score you need to get for each level is hidden, but it doesn't matter because the game is way too easy. You can use three pickaxes to destroy rocks in the way, so it's hard not to succeed in this. I got through all nine stages in under four minutes, at which point the music froze when it kicked back to the title screen. Attacking. Scroll around a town like an idiot looking for four or five tiny helicopters to shoot down, at which point you're sent back to the title screen. When you hit any direction on the D-pad, the game never stops scrolling, which makes aiming unnecessarily hard. I wouldn't doubt that this could make people motion sick, or at least hurt their eyes with how bad the sides of the screen look when scrolling over any part of the map. The never-ending 8-bit growl ensures nothing in this game looks or sounds good. It's actually a backstroke swimming game, but I guess this file had a four-character limit for its title. Mash A and B for a solid minute, win the race, that's the whole game. God damn it, EA, what won't you put your games on? Okay, it's not that battlefield. This is a weird mix of Pac-Man and combat, you move around and shoot things, assuming the fire button actually responds, but you can't shoot things without picking up the star. Getting shot by enemies kills you, but getting touched by them freezes you for an unnecessarily long time. I have no idea if there are even levels in this game. 
After a while, robot teddy bear things appeared, and that was the closest thing I saw to progression. Blackjack is exactly what... <gasps> it's Blackjack, but with bad music and bad fan art of a card dealer. It works, I guess? Well, the music doesn't work, it stops playing entirely after a couple minutes. I'd argue the silence is better, though. And lastly for this video, Blob Man. More like Flask Man, because the whole point of this is to collect a certain color of sludge at each stage. Getting the wrong color depletes the meter or outright kills you. I suppose the game is functional, but holy shit is this boring. Drops eventually fall faster, but even then there are long stretches of time where the right color doesn't drop. So you're standing still between the pipes just waiting for it to fall. When it does drop more than once, if they're more than one pipe apart, you're usually too slow to catch both, dragging each level out even further. And before I drag this video out even further, I'm going to take a break and play something better. Like Shaq Fu. Bomb time. Take a wild guess what this is going to look like. Yup, it's Super Bomberman 2, but with Luigi in the lead role. Because of how slow the game runs, blowing up enemies is a massive chore. It's only made worse by their hitboxes being about half the size of their sprites, and the pitiful starting size of each bomb's explosion. Power-ups are in the game, but they're quite rare. I only ever saw two. One for an extra bomb drop, and another for invincibility. Even when you do get rid of every enemy, you still need to find the door to get out. Yes, the door is buried. Here's hoping you find it before the timer runs out, assuming you can even read what the timer says. Boxes World. There's not much to say in this one. It's another block-pushing puzzle game, but it has a bear in the lead role. If I mentioned I don't like block-pushing puzzle games, I'm pretty sure I have. Brave Boy. Help Trunks get his sword out of a giant block of ice by collecting all of the fruit. This and other sentences that only make sense in the Lexabook universe. Two monsters are constantly trying to stop you. A smaller one which wanders around the grassy areas, and a big one which can walk through walls. Speaking of, the walls aren't. I had trouble figuring out where most walls started and ended because Trunks' sprite doesn't line up with them. He usually looks like he's walking on top of the walls instead of between them. Still, there are only 8 stages and I got through all of them in under 10 minutes. The experience is fast, but the music isn't. You might have noticed this already, but from here on out the music plays at one speed at the title screen, then slows down dramatically in-game. In other words, the music goes from a 5 second loop to a 9 second loop. Burrow. Help Santa fumble around in a dark maze so he can eat a giant cookie. I'm assuming that's what that is. Santa can only see one space ahead, making it hard to dodge the rave cats that wander the halls. This is nothing but guesswork. Avoiding the cats wastes way too much time, so a single wrong turn can mean failing the level. That is, of course, unless you boost the timer by collecting dragon heads. I guess the reindeer weren't badass enough for Santa anymore? Conviction. Move a glob of shit around to collect gold coin lollipops. Simple concept, bad execution. Every level is a long series of doors which warp you to other doors. I can't think of a single time I've seen this in a game and thought, yes! This will be a joyful and engaging experience which I will want to play again and again and look back on fondly when I'm older. Making things worse are the controls. I don't know what I expected this little tumor to control like, but man is it stiff and unresponsive. To the point that dodging otherwise non-threatening jellyfish looking things is a challenge. Oh, and you're on a timer. I am really getting sick of timers. Cute fish. 
I disagree, it looks pretty angry. And are those human teeth? Yes, that is correct. The teeth are human. Pick some bait and try to fish stuff out. There aren't any instructions, and I couldn't for the life of me figure out how this game worked. Usually nothing happened, except for stuff jumping out of the water just to taunt me. But a couple of times, something bit the line. I assume that's what it means when the line starts doing figure eights. Do I move the D-pad around, pull it back, mash a button, mash all the buttons? I only ever managed to catch one thing. A lobster. Or is it a crayfish? Or whatever. Dark Castle. No, it's not that Dark Castle. And I know some wise ass out there is going to argue that this is the better Dark Castle. But holy shit is this game annoying. You have to touch the flying tomatoes and or balloon demons to power up and defeat the dragon. Or the gargoyles. Or whatever else is on the map. You know, when I say it out loud, it sounds like a bad Monty Python sketch. And the randomly appearing and disappearing walls that can block you off or trap you with the monsters that follow your position don't help that notion. What also doesn't help is when the monster or the power-up item wanders out of bounds, or flat out disappears, and makes it impossible to finish a room. Even I somehow got out of bounds. It's like nothing in this game wants to be in this game. Even parts of the music will drop out for long stretches of time. Defensive. It's a lot like the pseudo-missile command game from earlier, but here there's nothing to protect. Also, you can just sit in the corner, hold fire, and never get hit by anything. Not the UFOs, not the fighter planes, not the nerf darts, nothing. Wait, play dice? But the menu just says dice. Roll a die around a board so that it ends up in the same position as another die, with the red dot facing up. There are bomb spaces later to avoid, but otherwise not much in the way of a challenge. There's no real end as the game loops when you finish all nine stages, which for me happened in under four minutes. The one game I was entertained by, and it was one of the shortest on the whole console. Alright, entertained is a bit of a stretch. Discus. Thought we were past the crappy track and field games? Hell no! Mash a button to build up power, then hit forward, then hold up to determine the throwing angle. I had to figure all of this out myself, mind you, and my hand cramped up from mashing to max out the power bar. Wait... Is that a caveman? Dragon Den. Take the role of Sonic Blast Man's little brother and shoot rocket fists at two dragon heads. I'm sorry if I'm making this sound way more interesting than it actually is. The jumping feels very Action 52-like, and the hitbox for the dragon heads seems to come and go if you're not hitting them right between the eyes. Every stage is the same, except you have slightly more things to dodge. Then again, dodging doesn't necessarily matter. I lost all of my lives in one stage because I kept getting hit by... absolutely nothing. I feel like I'm getting punished for succeeding. Dune War it's more like Grassy Field War, but whatever, the name is the least of the game's problems. Help Bazooka Guy shoot down planes and whatever they're firing at him in one never-ending stage of monotony. Even knowing the planes only come from one side of the screen, rotating to aim at them feels anything but comfortable. Whatever direction you think I'm hitting on the D-pad to rotate this guy, I guarantee you're wrong. The best part is when a plane approaches from a weird angle that you can't hit because you're only able to shoot in eight directions. Because planes need to be hit multiple times and the shot delay is way too long, it crashes into you and you lose a life. I miss Command & Conquer so much. Eating. Well, that's not the title image I expected to see, but I am American so I should be really good at this game. Play as a mutated mouse balloon thing and eat random shit that flies by. Birds, insects, floating bear heads, it's all fair game. Getting three or four of the same thing opens up a new form. Like the bird cat mouse balloon thing. Or the sunglasses douche bro mouse balloon thing. Do they do anything special? Eh, not really, no. 
Then the game starts dropping ice cream cones to freeze you in place, and gusts of wind that are hard to see against certain backgrounds. While not as bad as some of the previous games, it's still a total chore to play. Audacity Snakes Because I know someone out there's thinking it, yes, audacity is a real word. This is that snake game you've seen on everything from flash game sites to graphing calculators. If you think this is actually moving at a decent pace and isn't so bad, I should note that it's only doing this because I'm mashing the D-pad. Here's what it looks like when I let the game run at normal speed. Enchanter. It's dragon head without the dragon heads. Dodge spiders and spikes while shooting at glowing bats until the game tells you to stop. Faster bats count for more points, and points determine when you reach the next level. If nothing else, it at least didn't kill me for no reason like Dragonhead. And it gave me a pathetic looking victory screen when I beat it in under 7 minutes. Final Fighter. And no, it's not what you think it is. Take control of that giant boss walker from the first level of Battletoads and shoot whatever happens to drive past. Survive until the timer hits zero and move on. I didn't say the specific time because the timer runs even slower than the music. 35 seconds on this game's timer is actually closer to... 5 minutes. You can still get shot from off screen, so by the second or third level, you're all but guaranteed to die. Final Man. Is that a hat or a pizza monster? You're a turret that can only aim in 5 directions, taking out tanks as they roll in and try to shoot you. Some of the maps are so well designed that at certain angles, you end up shooting into a wall or the side of a building. Even then, shots only travel a certain distance before exploding, so you have to let everything get in close. Blue tanks take two shots, and red tanks take one, then drop a power-up. Aside from the health one, I have no idea what most of these power-ups do. Sometimes tanks will instantly shoot when in position, so even if you're quick, you'll still take damage and eventually die. The upside to that is the game runs a hell of a lot faster when you're dead. Fish War I swear I've already played a game like this on this console, but you eat fish to become a bigger fish so you can eat more fish. There's a dash button, but nothing in this game moves fast enough to warrant using it. It also does nothing for the game's biggest problem. You need to eat a lot to get the fish to grow, and the things you can eat don't show up often enough. I went several minutes without anything my fish could eat spawning. Oh, but when you do get your fish to start growing, another problem comes up. You can't tell what other fish, if any, you can eat. Whenever my fish grew and I tried to eat other, slightly bigger fish, I'd lose a life. And when you lose a life, your fish goes back to its starting size. It's like climbing halfway up a hill only to get kicked back down. Five days. Wait a minute, this music is recycled from another game. This has probably happened a lot more often and I just didn't notice it because... I mean, at this point I'm just focused on getting through all the games so I can punt this thing into the nearest dumpster. Let's just get this over- oh my god, it's the same damn thing as Final Man. Same map layouts, same turret setup, same enemies just with soldiers instead of tanks. They changed a few tiles and sprites, and called it another game. That's a full-on FIFA move, and I will not stand for it. Free? What's free? Oh, as in freestyle swimming! Yet another swimming game. Great. And at the Athens Olympics, no less. Hit buttons to make budget Chun-Li swim faster. Of course, by doing this, you also ensure she eventually drowns. I'm guessing there's a rhythm to this, but it seems like no matter what I did, she always ran out of stamina and stopped moving not even halfway in. Gem. But instead of holograms, you just have this horrible, starry, drug-induced nightmare. It's Pac-Man, but with way more dots, much slower, and next to no tension. Treasure chests act like power pellets to stun the big fish, and there are only three stages, so it only took about seven minutes for me to sleepwalk my way through this tedious crap. Ghost Palace. Is that Samus's helmet? Oh, are you... 
It's the same game as Enchanter, with different sprites. Five stages long, done in under four minutes, moving on. Ghost Ship. I swear that ship is from Bucky O'Hare. Speaking of, this is Battleship. It has a couple special moves to pick more than one space at a time, but otherwise, it's just really slow Battleship. I don't like Battleship at normal speed, much less at Lexabook speed. Hamel. Why is the title music Frere Jaca? It's the same game as Box's World. Sprites aside, the only difference is the loud power-up sound that plays every time you move. Is this it the rest of the way? Just games that are recycled versions of other games? I feel like we've graduated from Lexabook Purgatory to Lexabook Hell. Hell. I didn't mean that literally, but sure, fine. It's a gallery shooter where you help some kid in a onesie shoot a bunch of sentient trash bags and rabbits. Then make that giant enemy bar decrease by shooting gold chickens. I struggled with this at first because I didn't know I had to hold up or down before I could shoot it all. Also, I thought shooting the rabbits made the gold chickens spawn faster. But that didn't work most of the time, so it's probably just random. The enemy bar is supposed to get larger as levels go on but instead levels will end while they still have health. Speaking of, there are way too many levels. I tapped out at stage 16 because I was just hanging out near the left side and holding fire most of the time. Hitting... Mices? Drag this ape from side to side and throw rocks at the mice before they crawl into too many holes. Yes, this is another game we already saw in some form. The lightning bolt power-up doubles your speed, and it's pretty much the only way to have a chance. If five mice make it into the holes, it's game over. Unfortunately, the ape moves way too slow to be able to cover even half of the screen. I'm actually impressed in a weird way. The ape manages to move too slow in a game that already runs really slow. Hitting. I don't know if I'm more appalled by the bad name or the abominations next to it. Hit one of two buttons to zap these crimes against nature out of existence before they hatch and run away. Somehow this game, played with only two buttons, has super laggy inputs. Even so, it's still incredibly easy. Eventually the speed doubles and these child drawings come to life, like this mutated horse, require two hits, which you usually don't have time to land. Still, I never game over it or lost a life or whatever, and finished the game in under five minutes. Is it possible to lose at this game? I mean, I know I only played it for a few minutes, but I am not curious enough to go back and find out. Horrible area- YOU AGAIN?! Trap enemies in a box to kill them, and do it X amount of times to move up a level. This game barely works. I say barely because it's still possible, but stuff like randomly not being able to move happens. Also, this red seal thing keeps chasing me around and destroying my lines. So even when making really small boxes, I couldn't take out any enemies. Hua Rong Dao. This actually looks promising, is it? Oh, it's... It's a sliding block puzzle. Great, you know how much I love those. This is actually a very old puzzle based on the Romance of the Three Kingdoms stories. So at least it's got that going for it. But I also hate sliding block puzzles. I mean, at least this one functions. It's not like a block will duplicate itself for no reason, or the biggest block will teleport to the end of the stage handing me a win. You can also make custom games, so guess where I decided to place the big block? Hey, at least this way I legitimately won a game. And lastly for this video, hurry. Oh, I mean hurry burry. What is that in the upper left? Did you know there's a level select sheet in this game? To do it, you press... any of the face buttons. It's a dressed up block puzzle game where you do things like feed strawberries to carnivorous plants so you can walk past safely, or use bombs to blow up ice statues. The problem is, these statues freeze you if you touch them, or destroy them. 
or otherwise get near them. In other words, you're just not going to win. Well, that's... kind of a letdown. You know what, since we have to do all of these games anyway, fuck it, let's do one more. I mean, let's try to end on a high n higher note. Ice hockey. Or, wait, no, it's called Slapshot. No, it's called Super Pro Hockey. Why does this game have three names? Hold the fuck up, there are credits to this game? With English names? Hold on, I smell a rat, I'm going to do some research on this. Oh. My. God. They straight up stole an Intellivision game and put it on the Lexibo console. Well, we're still on. 141 consecutive games. And it's all because of one little console who... WILL IT BE STOPPED?! Labyrinth. Wait, this controller doesn't have a CRE button. This is the same as that Santa game earlier, navigating a dark maze without running into bugs before time runs out. This time, however, you play as a mouse. I I'm assuming that's what that is. And the power-ups are blocks of cheese. This feels more generous with time than the other game, but is no less grating to play. Fortunately, the 10 levels took me under 10 minutes to finish, at which point the end screen pops up. I think it's supposed to show the mouse dancing, but it looks like the sprites glitched out and there's just an ear celebrating. Lawn Purge, wait a minute. I've seen this game on a different cheap-ass bootleg console. Mow all the grass before running out of fuel. Hitting things like rocks or weeds causes you to slow down and use more fuel than normal. I say normal, but I really don't know what normal is. You move faster and use less fuel when going in long straight lines. Except when the guy slows down for no apparent reason. This wouldn't be as terrible if the controls... you know... worked. It's a coin flip whether the game will let you change directions when you want, or arbitrarily put a half-second delay on it. Given the already small margin for error thanks to the low fuel count, messing up once can often mean running out of gas, at which point the game boots you back to the title screen. Oh, and sometimes clouds will pass by and cause already cut grass to grow back. It's like nature's dick kick in shrieking 8-bit form. Lucky time. Guide the pig to eat things that get thrown at him by another pig. Earn X number of points to reach the next level. This goes really fast when you realize the pears count for the most points, and the cherry doubles your movement speed. There's not much in the way of challenge since nothing moves particularly fast and there's no time limit. There are barely any items that damage you, and the flashing money bag hearts don't increase your health because there isn't any. Yet another game that's over in under 10 minutes. M-Day. Space invaders, but you're underwater as a diver, or... crab, or... blue-haired child of some sort? Unlike space invaders, enemies move faster not as their ranks thin out, but as the stage count goes up. Said stage is displayed in the lower right. Yeah, that's not the life counter. Your life counter is the conga line of hearts that pops up when you die. It's five stages long, and I got through all of them in under three minutes. This whole game is shorter than the average Stone Temple Pilots song. I'll be completely honest, I just wanted to make a Stone Temple Pilots reference and didn't know where else to put it. Look, I need to remember the good times before I said, hey, why don't I make a Lexabook video? Magic Doors. Ever wanted a more convoluted and frustrating version of Hotel Mario? Well, here it is. Guide this homeless clown around, collecting items until the game stops you and moves you forward one level. You go through marked doors that lead to other doors with the same mark above them. Said marks include the male and female symbols, boat anchors, hearts... flowers? Some of these symbols get really garbled, and it's hard to tell what some of them are. 
I died a few times because what looked like two different symbols actually led to each other. Making matters worse is how slow the clown moves. Items despawn after a while, so if it appears more than 10 feet away, odds are he's not going to make it before it respawns somewhere else. That's also assuming the items spawn somewhere you can pick it up, as sometimes they'll appear within walls or rock piles. They also tend to blend in with some of the backgrounds, so good luck finding them if you're colorblind like me. Memory Test 16 cards, 30 seconds, and you're done. That's it. Oh, and the game freezes when you win. Monster War Take control of a bagel and shoot monsters. Slowly. By monsters, I mean scorpions, octopi, fish, and turtles with missile shots which you can't block. I don't know if it's that the maps are way too big, or the bagel moves way too slow, but oh wait, I, I do know, it's both. Even if you get some power-ups like the stronger shot or the speed boost, the game still moves at a snail's pace. Also, the enemies, which you have to destroy all of, will respawn several times, dragging out each level even more. Overspeed Racing I swear that logo looks familiar, but I can't pin it down because so many racing games have fire in their logos. Drive in a straight line until your fuel runs out. You can get fuel by running into fuel trucks, oh, oh dear god, it's just a demake version of that other racing game I played earlier. But here, touching absolutely anything causes you to crash. Even puddles of water make you lose control and explode. I'll say this one's better because of the mysterious green line that never goes away, like nature is trying to take over the street, and the speedometer. There's no fucking way this car is going 400 kilometers per hour, which for reference is faster than a Formula One car. Or maybe Doc Brown and Marty McFly have been doing it wrong this entire time. Panda. Get all the bamboo shoots, open the exit door, and leave the stage. Easier said than done because the panda constantly gets caught on walls. Also, traps pop up, usually without warning, and damage you. Flaming tiles also damage you, and seem to randomly go away since they can stay active for absurd amounts of time. Some will even deal damage from one or two tiles away. This is certainly harder than the previous games, but it's harder for all the wrong reasons. Penguin. That's the face of a protagonist that has already suffered a lot and knows it's about to suffer even more. Jump up each moving platform until the level ends. A simple concept, executed poorly. You can't move at all. Not while on the platform, not while in the air. If you jump and miss a platform, you die. If you jump, miss a platform, and try to land on the original platform again, you phase through it and die. If you try jumping on a diagonal platform when it's moving down instead of up, you phase through it and die. If the game starts you in a situation where it's not possible to jump up to the next platform, Pinball. I'd much rather play pinball on the Atari 2600 than this. It's the stiffest, most unnatural feeling pinball video game I've ever played. You would think that in a pinball game, you'd make sure the paddles respond faster than half a second after pushing a button. Assuming they respond at all. You might be surprised to know that, despite what it looks like on this screen, there's a second screen above this one which I only ever saw for a few seconds. Otherwise, I just watched the world's sharpest pinball roll past paddles that I had little to no control over. Play cards. It's solitaire. That's it. Well, it's solitaire with a very slow cursor, and you can't tell how many cards are in each stack. It even tries to do the Windows Solitaire ending, but it was animated by someone who just learned what a motion tween is. Plum- oh no! It's Mario Brothers, but slower. I'm realizing now that a lot of these games can be described as, insert game here, but slower. Aside from the speed, jumping feels really stiff, and I often just fell through the sides of platforms. Kicking enemies into the water can cause their spawn points to flash, but none of it matters because this game will abruptly end after a couple minutes. You got all the enemies? Good for you! 
There is no level 2. Plush dog. It's whack-a-mole, but with... Puppies? Fuck you, I'm not doing this. In fact, you don't have to. I dropped the controller and walked away, but kept advancing through level after level despite scoring zero points every time. Even if you actually wanted to whack the puppies, the controls are terrible. You can't hit two directions at once, and moving to the side while in a corner skips the cursor to the other side of the row. It's unpleasant to play on multiple levels. Pulver. It's Monster War, but with bugs. That's it. Puzzle. It's a slider puzzle with numbers. Fuck. Off. At least this game looks like it could run on Windows 3.1. Also, sometimes it doesn't spawn the numbers correctly. I wound up with no 8 tile, but did have a double zero tile. Radish Field. It's a Sart. Again. This time it would force me to use pickaxes, even if I'd already cleared all the regular spaces. Other times I still had tiles to clear and no way to get to them, but I got sent to the next stage anyway. Done in under 7 minutes, no ending, moving on. Road Hero. I couldn't tell if I was moving sometimes because, well, the road doesn't move. You can collect stars which... do nothing? Or you can collect whatever the hell this is to turn into a rocket car, which doesn't move any faster. Then get another to turn into a plane and fly over the course, meaning you don't have to pay attention to anything for a solid 20 seconds. Without that power-up, steering is sluggish and there's not much time to react to anything. The worst part of this game is that both cars need to finish before the next stage can happen. Of the roughly 9 minutes I spent playing this game, 4 of them were spent waiting for the CPU to finish. A CPU which I saw start a race by driving 10 feet straight into a barrel and crashing. At least the ending subverted my expectations. I was just expecting the end or nothing at all, but instead I got... <laughs> Robot. It's the same as those moving turret slash defense games from earlier, but there's a robot. It even has the same enemy planes and UFOs as before. At least with this one, you can't get away with sitting in a corner and spamming the fire button. But you can still alternate between two spots near the middle and be fairly safe. Rocket Man. Not the Elton John song. There seems to be something resembling effort put into this one. Each stage has three tiers, and you move between them to shoot whatever enemies pop up. The problem is the massive delay on everything. Shooting, initiating the rocket jump, landing... I need to see at least a full second into the future to take damage slightly less often. The exception to that is the Dragon Boss, which fires heat-seeking projectiles that are almost unavoidable. And to think, this was almost something resembling playable. Russia. This is probably going exactly where you think it is. Yep, it's Tetris, but with a bunch of deformed pieces. They managed to screw this game up by not having a straight line piece, so you can't even Tetris in Tetris, or in this case, Russia in Russia. Seaman. It is a terrible battle for survival, but it's a necessary part of the development. Nature can be cruel. Yeah, I have no idea how to play this. You get bubbles to fill the air meter, but you can swim to the bottom and... do... nothing? No items to get, the aquatic life doesn't seem to do anything, my final rating is a huh? out of 10. Shoot. It's the clay pigeon game from Duck Hunt. Sort of. Hit the D-pad to shoot left, hit the face buttons to shoot right. It's actually functional. This is one of, what, three, four games I can say isn't so bad on this console? And it only took 164 games before finally reaching that milestone. Shooting Balloons. I almost called this Low Rent Buster Brothers, but that doesn't seem quite right. You shoot balloons before they fly off screen and... Uh, actually, that's it. 
You can freeze time or get a speed boost with power-ups, but there's just one never-ending stage, and the gameplay gets old way too fast. Shot Put This is basically the same as Discus. Mash buttons, hit forward, hold up, go the distance. Eh. Silent Hunter This is like a strange game adaptation of The Hunt for Red October. I mean, aside from the ones that already exist. You pilot a ship toward enemy vessels and torpedo them into dust. Navigation is tough, but hitting anything is much harder. Sometimes hitboxes are just suggestions more than anything else. Also, some targets are too low for torpedoes, and I don't know how to fire down at them. Can I use depth charges? Do I even have depth charges? Sniper. This is just like that one game earlier where I won by not moving and holding fire. Guess what I did here? I didn't move, I held fire, and I beat the game in five minutes. Star. Replace the Tron light cycles with the snakes from Snake. When you're knocked out, your star trail disappears. That's about all I know for sure in this game. I don't know how scoring works, and I have no idea when I'm doing well or not. I've lost as the first snake eliminated, and I've lost as the last snake standing. I... I, I just don't know. Star Attack If Sinistar and Asteroids had a baby and then immediately abandoned it, this is what it would look like. I have no idea how to progress because it's nothing but the same ships going by no matter how many I destroy. Oh, but hitting them is a whole other ordeal. You move and aim the turret with the same controls. The turret fires in eight directions, but only faces four directions. So most of the time it's hard to tell where you're aiming. Strong. It's a block pushing game. Another block pushing game. Like earlier, you can skip levels by pressing the A button. It's just... It gets more and more underwhelming as the games go on, but... I can see the light at the end of the goddamn tunnel for these. Just... Just hang in there. Stub game. Move rows of bottles from the left pad to the right pad. Most of my seven minutes in this game was spent figuring out that's what I was supposed to do because this menu didn't make any sense at first. You can't put bigger rows of bottles on top of smaller rows. And even though there's an optimal step showing the lowest move count possible, the game only cares that you eventually get everything to the right pad. It doesn't help that if you accidentally pick up a bottle or reconsider and put it back down, that counts as a move. Even less helpful is how sensitive the cursor is. It moves so fast sometimes that it will clip through one side of the screen and appear on the other. This reminds me of a warehouse job I used to have, by which I mean it's not fun at all. Super racing. Why does this car look like a Tesla with elephantiasis? Reach the checkpoint before running out of fuel. Oh god, why do so many of these racing games on this console have a fuel count? Every car has different handling, top speed, and rev stats. The last one means acceleration. And in fairness, the stats actually affect the cars. Except for handling. Every car handles pretty badly. I don't know why you'd pick any car except the. Ferrari? Because its stats are basically maxed out. It's even faster than the Formula One car somehow. I was struggling to finish stage one until I realized there are two acceleration buttons. One for low speeds, and one for high speeds. Because someone saw the gear shift in pole position and wanted to make it more convoluted. You lose fuel by hitting other vehicles or puddles of water and crashing. But it's inconsistent when it happens. Sometimes I'd spin out, and sometimes I would just nudge other cars out of the way. As you go up, courses add some slight turns, or the road narrows. You're supposed to survive by getting fuel from these vehicles with crosses on them. But there's a slight problem. Only one of them actually does that. The others give points, but no fuel. That's okay as long as there aren't some really unfair bugs, like crashing into a truck and instantly losing almost half of your fuel. 
I crashed into a truck and lost almost half of my fuel. Moving on. Sur... LC? What does this mean? Oh, surfing! Guide the gold-plated Michelin Man to the end of the course. It doesn't matter whether you go between the gates or not, as the game only keeps track of when you start and when you finish. You also have to jump over what look like oil spills. But there's a problem with this. You can also pick the course, the number of skiers, and speed for each race. The jump lasts the same amount of time for every speed. So if you make the game faster and have to jump for any reason, you're going to fly across the screen and slam into whatever pseudo-futuristic building is sticking out of the water. There's no real ending to this game. The courses aren't all that different from each other, and picking multiple skiers just adds extra heats to the same race. No thanks. Table Tennis Tell me if this looks familiar. No, it's totally not Pong, because you can move the paddle forward and backward. Totally different. Also, it has hockey-like goals. Why are there goals in table tennis? It's hard at first because of how slow everything is and how the ball never changes trajectories regardless of where it hits on the paddle. But then I realized if I move the paddle to a certain spot, it always results in a goal. A goal which bounced off the back of my opponent's paddle. Tactful. Oh, never mind, it's called Clever Way. What... do I do? Do I reunite the boy with the dog? No. Do I help the dog get to either home? No. Do I help the kid get to the opposite house before time runs out? Oh, okay. It only took me five minutes to figure out how this game works. You have to move the bush around the map to shift different maze pieces around. But you can't move pieces if the boy or the dog are on them. And the dog likes to mill around on tiles that I need. Also, I realize this is just a glorified slider puzzle, so it's automatically on the shit list. Tank. Well, that's a tank, all right. Protect the big Olmec face at the bottom of the map while eliminating every enemy unit. Different units move faster or shoot faster or take more hits, but few provide any real threat. On top of that, power-ups drop which can build a shield wall around Olmec or wipe the screen of all enemies. It's kind of boring to play, but it becomes really boring when you realize there are 50 stages to this game. And what happens when you finish stage 50? It puts you back at level 1. Tower. Wow, you didn't even try to hide that you stole another Intellivision game, huh? It's a decent enough dungeon crawler where you fight monsters, collect treasure, and climb the Tower of Doom, but the Lexabook gets less than zero credit for ripping off yet another game. Twin Copters. Not the title screen I would have expected for a game called Twin Copters. It's a match game with monster faces which seemingly doesn't end, and... I mean, I just... Huh? Undersea. It's a Super Bomberman 2 clone. Again. But it's underwater. And has all the same problems as the last Super Bomberman 2 clone. Vectron. Why is the title screen a spoiled melon and an oil can? Build a fence before time runs out. That's the best I can explain whatever the hell this is. Bugs and or fairies will pick at and destroy parts of it, but you can shoot them from certain angles. This wouldn't be as bad if the controls, you know, made sense. You have to hit a direction and a face button at the same time to move the cursor, and it's rather vague what direction to press. For example, moving back and right requires holding... left. I for one welcome our new bug and or fairy overlords. Volleyball. Just at a glance, I'm assuming this game is stolen too. Most of the points scored were from the AI hitting the ball out of bounds because it's hard to control where your shots go. Also, the ball flying off screen makes it tough to tell where it's going to land. Yeah, no. Warrior. This is yet another game just like another game I played earlier, including the balloons that stunlock you for some reason. 
You're supposed to destroy the yellow tank thing until it becomes a red alien thing by shooting it, but you have a limited amount of ammo. Then you have to reload by picking up the AK-47 that randomly appears on the map. Even knowing that the tank slash alien will appear in the same spot each time, running out of ammo is virtually a death sentence. Not that I mind, considering how monotonous this gets after not even a minute of play. And lastly, way out. Is that supposed to be a heart or a butt on the title screen? Guide anime girl from the starting demon hell tile to the ending demon hell tile. She walks into a series of signs that turn her left or right, or lands on a confused face tile where you can choose whether to change the next sign or not. If you take too long to decide, she'll automatically move forward. Considering how mind-numbingly slow this game is in every other way, why would you rush the one bit of player input? Shouldn't this be the other way around, where they make her walk faster, but then give you more time to decide which way she goes? I mean, it's better than some of the other shit I've played on this, but that's comparing a rusted out broken down car to a rusted out broken down car with an air freshener in it. Wait a minute, that was only 184, but we're out of games in the game... Oh god, I forgot there was a more section. Because technically having all the games in four areas wasn't complicated enough, there's an extra section called more. This area is mostly board games or casino games, the latter of which are mostly card games, so there's not much to talk about. You might wonder why there were other card games outside of this section, some of which are in fact the same game, and to that all I can say is, don't think about it. Chess Master. It's chess. What more do you want from me? Bingo. No ambience, no excitement, and the menu with the exit option was cut off on my TV screen. Video poker. Why video poker specifically? Deal, hold card, deal, done. I won damn near every hand. There's also a card guessing game, which tells me whoever made this realized the base game wouldn't hold people's attention for more than 30 seconds. This did not help that. Gin Rummy. I don't know how to play this. Show Hand Poker. My opponent dropped out every time I placed a bet, even if my hand was garbage. A plus AI programming. Cake Shop. C -c 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 Combo Breaker! Make cakes for customers before they get pissed off and leave. Said customers include Pantsless Superman, Boxers Batman, and Spongebob Cosplayer. Every day in this game takes way too long, but it has to be long because of how slowly cakes are made. When a day finally does end after about 10 minutes, you can use the money earned to buy more equipment, like TVs to keep customers happy longer, or more ovens or storage trays for works in progress. This one wouldn't be so bad, but this snail's pace gameplay kills it. Roulette Wheel it's exactly what it sounds like, even if it is spelled roulette well in-game. Landlord. I've never played this, but still won somehow. Bonus points for the voice acting. I am Landlord. I am Landlord. This card. A pair of jacks. Three of a can. Do you want a three of a kind? Rocket is coming. Jump chess. I've never played this either. I go. Oh, it's just go. I don't know what the I is for. And I also don't know how go works. Hearts. Why is there a snowboarding pig on the playfield? I don't know how to play this game either, but... I think I won? It's hard to tell. Go bang. It's go but with match 5 rules. I... think. Draw trumps. I know so little about how this game works I couldn't finish it. Baccarat. Baccarat is the thinking person's game. There is a rules page before the game, but it's so low res I can't make out most of it, so I had no idea how to play it. Oh, you play it with the shoe and the Frenchman. I bet on the banker, myself, or... The... Randomly receive cards and win or lose. What? 
Find Diff. It's a spot the difference game. I recommend playing on Singal player with normal difficulty. Even if you're not that good at these, you can just mash a face button while waving around the picture and find all the differences. Eventually the game just gives up and throws you back into the menu. And then there's Kino. Yes, it's a lotto game. The card games I can maybe understand, but why would you play a gambling game like this where you can't win anything and there's no strategy to it? And that's the note the Lexabook ends on. Not a bang, not a whimper, but a dull hollow thud. Almost as hollow as the console itself. Now, almost all the games on this console are not worth anyone's time, and it's certainly not worth its original price point. But I can think of one positive. Not only can you play Discus on the Lexabook, you can play Discus with the Lexabook. Um, I think I threw it on the roof of the garage. Um, well, uh, I mean, I hope a bird can build a nest out of it or something, because I'm not getting it. Looks like the fake black stuff on the top cracked off. And we got a nice little split going down here and here. Hopefully one more can do it. Bottom half completely off. And look, we can actually see inside it now. It's just that board, that little piece, and that little piece back there. That's the entirety of the system. It's pretty much cracked in half at this point, but I feel like we really need to cut off the head of the snake, so to speak.